Welcome to Tabletop Cinema, where we bring together the worlds of filmmaking, tabletop role-playing, and video games. I'm your host, Mikey, a freelance filmmaker, tabletop RPG game master, and variety streamer on Twitch. And it has been a month since we last streamed, and it is great to see familiar faces right off the bat, Vanua and Ditsy. Hello there. It feels so weird being back on here, but at the same time, it's like business as usual, but... I'm sorry for being gone for so long. I had a long trip and I wasn't feeling so well when I got back. But now I feel recharged and ready to get back to it. And today we have something new. Old, new, new, old. It's the continuation of our first playthrough of the Banner Saga trilogy. We are going to get started on the Banner Saga 2. Also, Honkai Impact released. I might play that later. <laughs> sorry, Honkai Star Rail. Uh, everyone's streaming it right now. The variety of genres that I'm into, huh? I'm doing okay, Ditsy. The question is, how are you doing? Thank you for being here at the beginning of all things. Once again, the beginning of all things. The Banner Saga 2. Picking up right where we left off, a lot of things happened. I'm glad I was able to finish Banner Saga 1 before going out of town. I had a lot to stew on, and <laughs> we're going to be taking our save state forward. Where is that? Here we go. So what do I do here? I, a watch recap? Load game? W well, why don't I have the option to choose my save game? Okay, let's watch a recap over here. It has been a month, so what happened in Banner Saga 1? When the sun stopped in the sky, life continued as normal. Then the stone-armored dredge reappeared, ancient foes from the far northern reaches, and the world was thrown into chaos. Giant Varl defenders were slaughtered, their strongholds destroyed. Music now Hakon is the Varl king Red. and protects who is left of his race. Rook, a humble hunter and father of Alet, found himself leading frightened clansmen towards safety. His caravan crossed paths with Juno and Ivan, two of the mysterious spellweavers known as Menders. Who know something about the massive mountain breaking serpent on the loose? Can they mend that? Can they mend the broken world? Is that what In this Borsgard, is all about? In Borsgard, a town under the protection of the mercenary leader, Bolverk, both Varl and humans stood against a dread general. The immortal Sunder, known as Bellower. Juno devised a way to stop Bellower. Kind of cost the life of one held dear. Yeah, the life. They didn't specify who. The saga continues. <laughs> yes, Vanova, please do keep reminding me about that. I was able to get through the tutorial and everything. I am in the main menu proper, so I have an ID and everything already. I forgot to update you on that. But I have not been able to continue it. Because uh, I do want to take the story at my own pace. But yeah, greedy, fascinating premise. Uh, Limbus Company, talking about Limbus Company. So I do have a um, an ID which I should share um, so we can add each other. Are you all part of like the same clan or something? Okay, so that is the recap of Banner Saga 1 import a saved game or choose a hero all the fields are going to return let me lower this a bit okay there we go okay here we are uh import saved game rook day 138 profile one. Oh, it's starting already i'm not ready okay okay here we go. Teaming leader Alfred is a strong funk out to fleet the Ogre Alfred. 
Time continues washing over us, moment after moment, like waves on a coast. Some more fears, more violent than others. So few of my kind, the giant war, remain alive. Even so, I find myself wondering if humans, while able to bear children, suffer more for the loss of loved ones. Several weeks have passed since we slew the Sunder known as Bellower, but the chaos of the world did not wither as we hoped. It's not that easy. The world is breaking. We sail aboard hastily crafted ships for the safety of Arborain, the human capital. But the river curses us with a clear view of the dreads, assaulting another hopeless village. Damn, okay, and we begin already. That's pretty fast. I'm still trying to get over the fact... I'm still trying to get over what happened a month ago. We basically failed the game. <laughs> According to my own metrics. Oh, what? Move away from those glowing rocks! This one's mine! Don't do it! Are you gonna blow up? Oh. Oh, it was just a bomber. Oh, he's dead. Never mind. No! No! To the depths with you! This is a new character. Promote? There's Rook. There we are. Keep killing them. Damn it, Rook. Quit running ahead. Drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Just click the check mark to continue. Yeah, we're back. Okay. Yeah, what happened a month ago, we failed the game according to our own standards. Uh, my whole goal was to protect um, Rook's daughter, Alep, and uh, we, we failed that very badly. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, just sinking back into character slowly but surely. These portraits show the order of initiative, same thing as the last game. Taking turns from left to right, your heroes are blue, enemies red, it's your turn to act. Ivor. Movement happens before action. The ring shows that Ivor is active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some heroes fill more tiles than others. The horned heroes are a race of giants called Varl who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move on and click the check mark to confirm. Move Ivor here to get him into attack range. target an enemy click the tile in which they stand it's a good refresher course i think we're going through the tutorial again heroes tiles are blue the enemies are red target this enemy now by clicking his tile you can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor the numbers beneath each icon two eight show the damage you will do to the stat to that stat strength counts as both health and damage which was a very interesting twist to this genre or my first time experiencing this, your HP is also your damage. A loss of 8 strength means the character will now do 8 less damage. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. Armor blocks strength damage but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. Welcome back to tea. Early morning clean the house. You're taking your first GED test later today. What is a GED test? Sounds... Sounds serious. Sounds like a, you know, when things are, when things become an acronym, they tend to be very important sometimes, often, I don't know. <laughs> Is that like a general exam, some, general exam, ditzy? I don't know what it means. <laughs> but welcome back. Thank you for tuning in so early in the morning, even before your test. Please be sure you are ready before you take upon the responsibility 
Ooh, okay, where were we? Breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. Got it. Yep, same thing. So only seven strength remaining. A strength attack will kill it. Let's click the red fist icon now to attack a strength in your choice. What did they add? What did they add in Banner Saga 2? He's down! Each time you make a kill, you're down gross, which is used to later improve your characters. Without an enemy to reach, this enemy will choose to smash an obstacle in his way. Obstacles in the combat board. Okay, obstacles are new. Uh, obstacles in the combat board will make you change tactics, so plan wisely to make them work to your benefit. Now it's Hakon's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all heroes can use willpower to boost their actions. Here we are with willpower. By clicking on gold tiles, a hero can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower for each step that includes a gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you'll have to get to be in range. Oh, that's also new, this indicator. I think the red indicator's new. Not quite as intuitive as Fire Emblem right now, but any good quality fly improvement is good. Okay, move a con into range right now. Clicking your hero's tile at any time will also bring up all of his combat options, including move, ability, attack, and end turn. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy. But Hakon has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click Hakon's purple ability icon to access his ability now. Okay, the ability description appears in the tooltips below. Hakon's sundering impact allows him to hit so hard that multiple adjacent enemy tiles take damage on every hit. Same thing, right? Same as his ability last game. Or was it? Oh, wait. Select the enemy's tile and then confirm your choice to hit them hard with Sundering Impact. A powerful strike. When there's only one enemy left, heroes enter pillage mode. During pillage, each hero moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest to regain one willpower. Aleo will rest this turn. Looks like the dredge is in some trouble. Rook won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost his damage. Click the dredge grunts tile to attack. Click the red fist icon and then a star above the fist icon to add willpower to the attack. The number of stars available each turn are determined by your exertion stat. You'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower. Click a star and then the check mark to kill this enemy. Okay. Uh, not finished. Damn, he's uh he lost his daughter. So that's gonna be I don't know, man. <sighs> oh, Rook, don't throw your life away! He, he's pissed, you know, let, let, let off some steam. What? Okay, this is a battle we're supposed to lose. Ah! <laughs> I'll kill you all. I don't care. So, well, there, there I go. A final blow directed at your head is deflected, and giant horns slam to the dredge surrounding you. Ivor pulls you to your feet and away from combat as others. As other fighters from your caravan rush in to finish off the enemy. I'm getting reckless. Ivor moves you past the crowd of worried villagers, ensuring you can stand on your own. 
I don't know what you were. He stops speaking as the villa's chieftain approaches. Of our leader saving a human village from those things, legends are made of much less. No Var leader, just Ivor. Those things were dredge, like the stories you probably heard as a kid. General education diploma. Ooh, homeschooled, so there's no documentation that I've completed general education. And this will be the paper trail to prove it. Sounds good, Ditsy. Best of luck today on your test. Hope you make it. No, I, I'm sure you'll make it. But again, again, thank you for tuning in. Despite needing to prepare for all that, I hope you are ready. Don't let us distract you from this momentous occasion. But yes, good luck. So, back to Ivor. And it was Rook here who ordered us to stop. Forgive me. Maybe it's this never setting sun or dredge or the deaths of so many of my clansmen. I am not myself. The man's eyes appraise you and he quickly nods. I am Aleo, the Skald. Were you trying to drive the dredge all the way back north by yourself? Okay, um, Rook, we just lost our daughter, Alette. Let's, uh, how do we want to play this? Let's just, okay, he charged into battle, ready to throw his life away. Uh, okay, he's just angry. I wouldn't stop there. Alea looks into your eyes for a moment before recoiling. Something terrible must have happened to have such hatred for them. A topic for another time, Scald. Maybe. Of course. Mind if I ask of news from Borsgard? We heard rumor that the Sunder Bellower was laying waste to the town. More than rumor. But he's been dealt with. By... By your clan. Your Sunder Slayers. The term makes Ivor wince and ends Aleo's excitement. But what about the deep shaking in the ground? Only yesterday we felt a rumble like none before. <laughs> you think we have all the answers? <laughs> all right, let's let's. I don't know. He's just angry. He's not. He doesn't really lash out at other people. Um. Say nothing. Ivor looks at you expectantly, then sighs. All these questions, I'm being rude. Please, join us. Let us feast in your honor. No time for that. We should be going. Nonsense! You just arrived and defended us. Don't insult us by leaving before we thank you properly. I meant all of us should be going. Your people too. Not to sound ungrateful, but this place, it's all we have. It's our home. <laughs> we never should have stopped. Not quietly. <laughs> okay, he thinks of home. He thinks of Alette. He thinks of everything he's left behind. Not quietly. No. We didn't risk ourselves so the dredge could kill you tomorrow. The Skald looks around at the small huts of his village. Borskar is the only other place I've seen in my life. This small village is all my family knows. Are things really as tragic as you're making them sound? Probably worse. Alea looks back and forth between you and Ivor before nodding. Packing and tending to our dead will take some time. But I'll have everyone on the ship soon. Aleo heads off to the village to organize supplies. The world breaking. Dredge mothers fighting alongside warriors. A giant serpent. <sighs> Not sure what to make of it all. 
Ivor, one of the giants known as Varl, has fought Dredge in his northern winters, personally killed the Sunder Rays, and lost an arm to the Sunder Bellower. He has been by your side through everything, including the death of your daughter. <laughs> now you feel the weight of his full attention. Would you pull down there, fighting the dredge alone? Was that tied to a let at all? <laughs> don't mention her name! No, I don't think he's that lost. Mm. I'm trying my best to hold it all together. Keep holding it all in, and you'll lose it when these people need you most. That was my reason for living after all this died. I remember. But make this caravan your reason now. There's still plenty for you to do. All this, all this, all this. Oh, shoot. He walks towards the village, leaving you alone with your thoughts. Like, who was all this again? <laughs> was it the village chief then? All right, emo father, let's go. Chapter 8 From their homes must all flee. Sorry, just checking. The traveling merchants are surprisingly well. Oh, it's Ubin. The traveling merchants are surprisingly well stocked. Ubin, the old Varl, dubbed Scrivener, says, Since Borsgard, our numbers have grown. People have scavenged for food and eaten it too. Regardless, we'll need plenty of supplies considering our destination. Whoa! Well, Eight look at that months. Eight months of being subbed smile. Thank you so much for the subscription, despite us missing for a month. I'm so sorry to have been gone for so long, but glad to be back here. Thank you for making it on time, Fisher. Welcome back. Good to see you all again. Familiar faces. It's like I've never left. But here we are, Fisher. We have started on Banner Saga 2. We just started, actually. And strap in for a long evening. Uh, we are just waiting in town right now, so... Uh, wait, what is he saying? Okay, S plenty of supplies. We lost a let. Um, we're continuing from our safe state from last month. Where can I find the submerchants? You can't miss them, he says. A group of tents they call a market. What kind of supplies? Stuff like food and mead for the trip. The merchants have got a few interesting items as well, but folks can't eat those in lean times. You'll have to choose wisely. Even your renown will only stretch so far. Thanks, Ben. Did I post? I posted, right? Oh yeah, cool, cool. I did make a post right when we went live. So it's a simultaneous kind of thing. But thank you for reminding me. But yes, we did send out a post. It has been quite a while. <laughs> but, oh man. This week, uh, it's going to be busy. Gaming-wise. So yeah, we started the Banner Saga 2, but... Honkar, Honkar, Honkai Star Rail, something I've been wanting to play for quite a while, um, is just released today. Resident Evil 4 has been waiting since our return, so it's been waiting in the sidelines. And 
Jedi Survivor is releasing in a couple of days. So, and there are more releases like Everspace 2 and other games. <laughs> But what have you guys been playing like over the past month? It feels like forever. I know you were getting into Volcano Princess. Thank you, by the way, for the review, Vanoa. I never played like a Princess Maker game, so I might make that my first. But yeah, there are so many games, so much to catch up on, so much to do, and we're only getting started. But thank you for being here and supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. Well, uh, like, yeah, what have you guys been playing and what have you guys been watching? Um, when I was trying to recover the past week, I also ended up finishing Mando, Mandalorian. Uh, I finally watched Andor, which is really, really well done. I love Mando. I love Andor for very different reasons. I checked out Star Wars Visions because Star Wars Visions Volume 2 is releasing next month. Um, I've been quite in a Star Wars mood. And anime-wise, I just finished watching Bocchi the Rock, which actually helped motivate me to get back as soon as possible and made me believe in myself again. Thank you, Bocchi the Rock. <laughs> anyway, uh, of course, Ubin says. Oh, almost forgot. There's something ruffling the feathers of the ravens, the mercenaries who followed us from Bolsgar. Chat with their leader, Bulwark, but be careful. He's not like other Voro. This medallion gives you information about your caravan, including population, supplies, renown, and the number of days that have passed. This banner indicates that you have enough supplies to provision your caravan for 28 days of resting or travel. A larger population requires more supplies per day to survive. You can acquire additional supplies at this market. Click on the market to see what's available. These are the supplies the merchants have available. It will give you 5 per renown, and you need 7 supplies per day to survive. Okay. This shows what you have. Your 197 supplies will last for 28 days. You have 11 renown available, 11 renown available to purchase supplies. This game does something slightly different when the caravan is concerned, but they'll teach you when it comes up. Ooh, well, I was wondering what they were, what they changed in Banner Saga too, what they changed, what they added. I hope it's, you know, I hope it's better, of course, gameplay wise. Click this button to add fifteen or more supplies to your caravan. The area to the left will show how these supplies affect your caravan. Now that you've added your supplies, you must confirm the change by pressing this button. Markets also have items available. These items are equipped by your heroes and can provide a great advantage. The required hero rank is shown in the red circles. When finished, exit the market by clicking this button. Ooh, let's talk to... Uh... Oh, shoot. I forgot all their names. Oddleaf. Oddleaf. There we go. Oddleaf, your former chieftain's widow. Thank you for reminding me. Oddleaf, your former chieftain's widow, is demonstrating fletching an arrow to a few people as you approach. Give us a moment, will you? The group walks away as Oddleaf stands and wipes loose feathers from her tunic. Oh, sorry, she said something. I doubt you're here to explain your actions with the dredge. It was nothing. <laughs> Let's uh, turn up the edge. Running into a retreating dredge alone is nothing. She recognizes your silence for what it is and changes the subject. <sighs> I wanted to discuss the clansmen. They're good at scavenging for food while we travel, but we could always use more fighters. But training them takes time. I'm not sure we have much of that to spare. Then you'll just have to find a balance that works. We're okay for now, but who knows how our needs will change. 
I see. Thanks. You turn to leave, but Oddleaf places a hand on your shoulder. We should talk, Rook. At some point. Talk about what? <laughs> I also just watched the Batman, so I'm just like... So edgy right now. You. Not you, the leader. But the man I knew from Skogar. She gives you a faint smile and returns to her fletching. I do want to talk about it. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to... Oh, normal caravan morale does not affect your hero's willpower in battle. Maintain sufficient supplies and rest in camp to improve morale. A red skull icon shows that some of your units are injured. Huh? Use the rest tent to pass time and heal. Full recovery may take several days. How is our... How, how is our party? Did it save our injuries from the last game? Where are we right now? Exactly. Edge so sharp you could cut yourself in. Edge with each with a space between each letter. Maximum edge. We are in Ormstaller. A Strom led some of the first band east. Strom's march, right? Ormstaller was one of the most important places they settled, nestled in the crook where the Ormsa River splits. If Borsgard and Ormsdaller were twins, Ormsdaller would be the righteous brother trying to keep his evil twin from hurting anyone else. Right. Borsgard. Screw that place. Where were we, anyway? Where, where was the final encounter? Was it in Borsgard? We're going to Arborang, right? So we're taking the river down. Okay. How do I go back, Bomex? Final encounter was in Borisgard. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we are going down. We are going to. We're trying to go to Arbaram. I think that's what they said. Let's talk to the Ravens. The Varl mercenary leader, Bolverk, and a rather large female fighter are talking to Juno, a member of the spell weaving Mender's Council. Bolverk looks annoyed. Nothing unusual. There is no haggling on this. You already accepted the offer in Bowsguard. Get this one to do it. Get me to do what? If Juno was surprised by your presence, it doesn't show. She continues to stare straight at the Varl. Rook is seeing to the survival of this caravan. Something I doubt you care to do. He won't be seeing to anything much longer if he keeps fighting like he did earlier. But I'm still here now. <laughs> Rook is so edgy right now. And I'm thankful for that. Your importance to these people cannot be overstated. Okay. But what were you three talking about? With respect, Rook, that stays between us for now. Her look at Bulwark says she expects him to keep it private. Ivan needs my help with healing the wounded, but we should leave soon. See Hakon at the dock when you're ready. Juno leaves without another word. Fain Valka, one of these days Claw and Fang will get thirsty for Spellweaver blood. Claw and Fang. His axes. The large axe heads are polished, the blades sharp, and the cheeks scarred from plenty of use. But it's the grey handles that stand out. They're unlike anything you've seen before. How long are you going to let Juno tell you what to do? You avoid his goading. Only to Arberam. Then... It's King Minolf's job. Like he's got the answer to any of this. He'd royally piss himself if he ever saw a dredge. The pigtailed fighter laughs. <laughs> Have we met? 
I'm Folka. The shield maiden in charge of keeping the ravens alive. Wolver gives her a stern look, but she doesn't back down. I already know who you are, chieftain. I heard there's a problem I should know about. How's it going, Izzy? Yeah, actually, well, you, I have, I have, I did not stream for almost a month. I was out of town, but great to see you, Izzy. How's the game going? We just started on Banner Saga 2. So I was out of town for almost three weeks, and I took another week off. I was readjusting being back here in the country, and uh, this is my first stream since we finished Banner Saga 1. So, yeah, a lot of big releases this week, though. Um, so... Maybe I'll see you when I start streaming Jedi Survivor, if you're interested in that. And Resident Evil 4, I definitely will be playing that. That Those are the big games I'll be streaming this week. And maybe I'll play Honkai Star Rail off stream, but we'll see. But yeah, Banner Saga 2, well, we just started. No opinion on it yet. Um, playing Rook, who's like super edgy right now, because we lost Alet in our final decision last week. The Settlebay did three DLC. Yeah, I saw that they released the Settlebay three DLC, which is good because I haven't continued my playthrough on it yet. So I'm glad to hear that it is so good, um, and I'll be able to play it more easily since I haven't even finished the game yet. So, would you recommend playing it after the finishing the game though? On par with the Witcher expansions? No way. That is a high bar you have just set for this ex for this DLC. Thankfully, I have the season pass, so it should be ready if I ever, if and when I get started again on Set 3. It's been a while. And yeah, I know you're not really excited about the new Zelda. Neither am I, actually. I'm not. But I do have to finish uh, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Never finished it. I don't know. I got bored of it at some point. I have to finish it before... Tears of the Kingdom next month. So, yeah, a bunch of games. The Varl seems to grow taller and more wild as he takes a step towards you. You stop it to save every fine idiot along the river will get us all killed. Makes more sense to only stop the ships when we need supplies. And get rid of half these useless people too. They're slowing us down. Hmm. Okay, Rook lost his daughter, but he hasn't lost himself yet. So let's stick to our principles. That's not going to happen. Humans, you're all the same. You think you have it all figured out in your short lives. You got no faint clue what's going to happen. No more than any of us. They finally confirmed someone. Oh, dungeons. Oh, okay. How do the dungeons look this time? I, I hope they're not just like those trial rooms. Experiment. Hey, what's up? Experiment ego. Experiment to go. How would you like this pronounced? But welcome in. And I believe you just started casually streaming recently. But how's it going? Is this the same account? Or did you just change your name? <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order? You're playing- wait. What is this, like a pre-release or...? Ah, wait, sorry. Fallen Order is the first game. You're getting prepared for Jedi Survivor, right? Some people have taken calling you Tigo or Ego. Hey, you know, Tigo sounds pretty cool, but we'll see what I get used to. Okay, Matthew or Tigo or Ego. Tigo sounds like a cool call sign, and you are always good with naming your characters. Depending on the setting. Hey, Tego. 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 Okay. Tego. Call sign Tego. Yes. I'm excited for Jedi Survivor. And, you know, they're, they got the release schedule figured out. 
the the Star Wars people, right? Like Mando just finished. So next we have Jedi Survivor. Then after that, we have Ahsoka. Uh, no, sorry. We have Jedi Survivor, and then we have Star Wars Visions 2, and then Ahsoka. But I'm not yet tired of it. <laughs> They're different enough that I'm not getting tired of Star Wars yet. I don't think I will. But I hope the quality is consistent. Uh, I just watched Andor, by the way, uh, after finishing Mando and... Mando and Andor, oh man, they're so good. Andor is on another level entirely for me. No, I, I agree. Andor, the writing, the cinematography, everything about it, like it doesn't even. It, no, they, they you know, their brief was to make it a political thriller, and they weren't burdened by the legacy of Star Wars. Not really. Um, and you could tell. And it's just it's just really great filmmaking. I just loved it. I just loved Andor. And I'm excited for season two. Uh, so I, I do have faith in Filoni's creative team. And I also have faith in the Rogue One team. And I was wondering, like, why does this... Why does Andor feel so familiar? And then I just realized the creator, writer, and director is... <laughs> the one who did the Bourne uh, movies, the Bourne trilogy movies. So, oh, okay. No wonder it feels very Bourne identity. And I like the Bourne trilogy. Unfortunately, Izzy, I have not been caught. I, as you can tell, I am pretty slow when it keeps to keeping up with all of these things. Like, when I took the week off, I just watched some old stuff. Like, I finally watched Bocce the Rock. I finally watched The Batman I finally watched Ex Machina. You know, I'm so last season. Uh, I will admit that. But I do have those... Um, the, the, uh, the anime this season you suggested, it is on my list. Um, and when I run out of things to watch, which is probably never, I don't know. We'll see. I might get to those next season. We'll see. But yeah, those are the stuff I've watched recently. And yeah, I'm very last year, last season. But... It is quite inspiring getting through um, all of that. Ah, yeah, book of, book of Boba Fett. Eh, nah, <laughs> nah, for me. Uh, Mando season one for me, of course, remains a high, uh, great thing for me. But okay, Mando, the later seasons of Mando, you could tell they were starting to shift back into the, for lack of a better term, the Filoni verse. It's like they were trying to pick up from the Clone Wars. Like, yeah, Mando started season one. It is its own thing. It is super great. But then you could tell they were trying to shove more lore into it to drive it into a collision course with Clone Wars and Rebels and to get us prepared for Ahsoka. So it's like they're shifting. I, I feel like they did as much as they could stuffing Mando with Clone Wars and Rebel stuff. I guess they'll offload that to Ahsoka and maybe what's next for Mando is a kind of soft reboot or reset where he goes on on his own adventures, finally. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed everything mostly. Book of Boba Fett is, well, I didn't really enjoy it that much. But yeah, I still looking, I'm still looking forward to those creative themes, but especially um, the Rogue One theme. Mando made Boba Fett the character obsolete. I'd have to bring him back to prominence is sad, only him further. It's unfortunate, right? And then they also did the they also had an episode where it was basically Mando coming back, and it's like, hey, don't forget, this is just a si a spin-off. So poor Boba. But again, Tamuera Mer Morrison, it's still awesome. He did great as Boba Fett, I still feel. Um what they did, but yeah, you're right. It's just it cheapened it, but hey, here we are. What's gonna happen to Boba now? I don't know. Bulwark snorts and turns his attention to a large sealed cart behind him. His bare cloak back indicates the conversation is over. Oh, it is over anyway. So here we are with Banner Saga 2. We just started. Apparently you have injured people. I can't check though. I cannot check my party. 
Sure, let's rest. And let's leave. The wooden planks of the well-used dock creak as you walk across them. Hakon, a warrior recently acknowledged as king of the vo What? Okay, where did that as I totally forgot about that. He is acknowledged as King of the Varl now. Paces on the dock. Oh, right, because... Yeah, the actual king died and then Hakon stepped up. Right, right, right. Okay, now I remember. Not sure I was made for, uh, not sure I was made for this, he says as you approach. Commanding in battle is one thing, but deciding how many chickens we need to bring... We've both made harder decisions. So right now I'm playing Rook as the super edgy father who just lost his daughter because I'm still sad about that. True, Hakon says. But usually I'm following orders and only thinking about where to swing my axe. Now, every decision affects the next. He pauses, then laughs deeply. <laughs> Vognir, my last kinder, would have given me grief about thinking at all. A dark mood washes over him. His death remains a mystery, but I'll figure it out. Let's sail. Depart. Yeah, Vognir was like mysteriously found. Ah! Ooh, what is this? A summer's end Hong Kong? Uh, wait. Ah! Okay, this looks cool. A Summer's End is a visual novel set in 1980s Hong Kong. It tells a love story between two women, lush and vibrant visuals. The game features over 400 unique hand-drawn artwork inspired by Asian cinema and 1980s anime. Wishlisting. Wishlisting it. Where is that? Where is the wishlist button? <laughs> Thank you for this recommendation. Actually, the game you were streaming, um, Tago, I was getting used to that. Uh, what was that? Shadows of Doubt? Seemed interesting as well. You know, like a, a very serious investigative game. But this, A Summer's End? Hell yeah. A Summer's End, Hong Kong 1986. Oh, this is released three years ago. Overwhelmingly positive reviews. And it's on sale. Okay, this is a visual novel. Okay, it's a visual novel. It follows the story of Michelle and Sam and how their chance meeting evolves into a deeper relationship. Set in vibrant Hong Kong in the year 1986 is an original story about love, family, and culture. Awesome. And I still do have a soft spot for old school Hong Kong. You know, uh, the era of Chow Yun Fat and John Woo. You know, th that era of cinema. Young Jackie Chan and all that. Tequila, hard-boiled, all of that. You might want to look into Loot 8 Summer of Gods. Why is this familiar? Did I wishlist this already? Summer of Gods. Okay, I have not checked this out yet. Okay, anime. Your choices shaped the world in this coming-of-age RPG. Also in the 1980s, but rural Japanese town with the mysterious ability to loop time. Oh, it's a timey-wimey thing. Your every decision and relationship will affect the outcome of battles against the invading Kegai. Oh, okay. Wish listing that. Speaking of time loops, I finally, like, mustered the energy to check out Tenet. I just... I... It was really bad. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, I don't know for any Christopher Nolan fans out there. You know, yeah, he does have his shortcomings, especially when it comes to writing women. But, oh man, Tenet was just so bad. Sorry, I just did not like Tenet. Okay, after lighting the funeral pyre, the last villagers find seats on your rickety longships built of scrap wood scavenged in Beauregard. The ravens find space around a large cart on their black-sailed vessel, or slowly move all the boats into the river's current. 
You grow in power by growing your relationships. Hell yeah. Sounds totally like social links. Wish listed. Thank you again for these recommendations. Oh, more recommendations. Oh, hey, yo, Vanwa, that is wish listed already. I totally forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me about it. Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. Uh, Lovecraftian Sherlock Holmes. Set in the new universe. Uh, the rebooted one, right? Uh, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. So, Awakened is definitely lined up. Because I... Sherlock Holmes plus Cthulhu. Alright? I need to play that. And it is a Frogwares game. Uh, Ukraine made, so definitely. Yeah, at this rate, with all the games I'm playing right now, I might end up getting it on sale. But that is definitely wishlisted. Aleo looks ill. At least it's not the Brackish Sea. He whispers to himself as he steps around rowers and baggage to speak with you. I'm not sure we were all built for aquatic voyages, he says. And I hear our barang is quite a distance away. My people could use a few hours rest on solid ground. Ooh, seasickness, boy. I also suffer from that terribly. The hopeful looks for mothers sway you, and you signal for the ships to make land. I didn't get a choice! Would you mind telling me why the capital is our destination? Aleo asks. <laughs> We're not this edgy yet, okay? It just is. Now, help, bro. Oh my god, Fisher. And another one that is on my wish list. Uh, I have it on Game Pass. Coffee Talk Episode 2. Sad to hear it didn't do... Well, the headline was, it's not as fresh as Coffee Talk Episode 1, but I do want to continue my stories in, a, uh, in Coffee Talk. I enjoyed the first game. It is before I started streaming. But Coffee Talk Episode 2 is also on the list. So, yeah, we got an unlimited supply of games to stream. And the question is, what? how else can we grow as a channel is my concern right now. But, yeah, so many games. We got that solved. But thank you for these suggestions. They're all in line. They're all on the wish list. It's the furthest place of the dredge. The Valka, Juno, says the menders there can protect us. Our branch walls have never been breached. The Valka, Juno, says the menders there can protect us. Menders? The scald's shoulders slump. We were all hoping for something more substantial. He realizes Ivan and Juno can hear him. I thank you for healing my people, but we're talking about an army of dredge. The Valka and her apprentice share a smile, but say nothing. Dredge, Aleo says, almost in awe. Man and Varl storied foe from oh so ever long ago. But they're real, and here... How have they made it so far south? His glance at the Varl is met with both anger and shame. The longship rocks gently, and the skull grabs a rope to steady himself. If we... If only we had the fabled horses to ride upon, we'd outpace the dredge and be on sound footing. His dramatized mystery is almost as amusing as his thanks when he steps back on the land. Morale improved. Explorable area dungeon, but the deal characters logically mistook it for the actual use of a prison. No idea how gamers started calling the stuff dungeons very bizarre. Ah, huh. dungeons, palaces. Yeah, hmm. You're right. It has kind of been. You know, dungeons have kind of become not exactly a location, but I don't know. You're right. Hmm. Okay, yeah, well, I think it started, of course, with the old school dungeon crawlers. You know, those fo first person text based ones. I have a feeling, I have a feeling, I, I'm not, I've not, I have not done research on this, but I have a feeling dungeon started from there, and then now it became a catch all term for a separated area that is designed to be explored. I don't know. 
<laughs> Light Racer Spark. A separated area that is not open world, like a separated area that is relatively contained uh, with obstacles to overcome and treasure to find. And I think that is what a dungeon roughly is. Light Racer Spark. I don't think this is on the wish list. Let me check it out. Whoa, Steam Puzzle Fest is. Oh, uh, St Steam Puzzle Fest is going on right now. Uh, Light Racer Spark. Oh, this reminds me of Everspace 2. I want to play that as well. I've been itching for a satisfying space sim. And Everspace 2 is supposedly better than Freelancer. Freelancer um, was one of my favorite games. So I would love to play a spiritual successor to Freelancer. And supposedly Everspace 2 is it. So I want to get into that. Light Racer Spark, however, is a sci-fi narrative game. You are an amender from a high civilization, descending to various extraterrestrial worlds. Guide living beings to prosperity or nip a spark at the bottom. Holy crap. This is like first contact procedures. What? Accumulate strength through choices and strategies to grasp the rights of all. So it's a like colonization simulator. Oh, that is going to be challenging. Observe growth. Experience the process of creating the role. So like, how far if at all should you meddle with these civilizations that's a very interesting well, what kind of, what's the gameplay like though building construction changing the future interesting all right wish listed it it's currently at mostly positive and it was just released this april what these summer releases man so many games what is this dead mother <laughs> Paolo Cruz, welcome back in. Kira Kira, great to see you. Politely raids you and gives you cheese. I love cheese, despite the fact that I have started to get old and I have become more lactose intolerant, sharing too much right now. But I will not give up on cheese and dairy products. I love cheese, specifically fried camembert with jam. Now I am hungry. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the raid, Den Mother. We were just... Um, the community was just sharing some suggestions with me. Some game suggestions. You can't see it on screen right now. But yes, this map is absolutely beautiful. I love maps like this. We are playing the Banner Saga too, by the way. But yes, welcome in. This is our first stream in a month. And it's just all coming back to me now. Oh, ah! Welcome back. Thank you, Ponder. And great to see you here, Ponder. What is going on? Yes, finally back. Ready to catch up. And you haven't played Paranormal Sight. If, if you have not checked out Den Mother and Ponder, please do check out their channels. They are amazing streamers and great communities to be a part of. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for the subscription. Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Honjo. That sounds interesting. You love cheese, even if cheese doesn't love me back. Oh, that hurts me now. Yes. I thought it wouldn't happen to me, but it is now happening to me. I was just like so many dairy products. But OMG one year. Let's go. That, that's how the text of speech pronounce it as. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you so much for the 12th month. This is crazy. What is going on? But now that you're all here, it feels like nothing has changed. Well, no. You know, th I just had a random thought about how saying how nothing has changed can be a good and a bad thing. But I will say I said it in a with good intent. Nothing has changed, meaning that it feels great to see familiar faces, but also moving forward for positive change. Anyway, whatever. That's just a random thought. But hello. Thank you for this. Thank you for the support, everyone. Thank you for the raid. If it is your first time here in Tabletop Cinema, welcome to Tabletop Cinema, where we bring together the worlds of filmmaking, tabletop role playing, and video games. I am Mikey, a freelance filmmaker, tabletop RPG game master, 
and variety streamer on Twitch, and we play a lot of narrative-focused games here, but any genre is on the table. Um, I have a wide variety of interests, but story-rich games you'll find mostly here. And every Tuesday, well, today's Wednesday now. I couldn't stream yesterday, so I'm making up for it today. But every Tuesday, we are streaming The Banner Saga 2. Tomorrow, Thursday, we will be finishing our first playthrough of Road Warden, another text-based adventure, RPG. And this weekend, we will be getting started, finally, on Resident Evil 4. But before that, on Friday... I went out of order there. Okay, Thursday, uh, we have Road Warden. Friday, I would like to celebrate the launch of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I am looking forward to that. Jedi, The Jedi Knight series, the Dark Forces, Star Wars Dark Forces Jedi Knight series remains one of my favorite video games ever, which is why I fell in love immediately with Jedi Fallen Order, which is kind of like a spiritual sequel to Jedi to the Jedi series, and now we have Jedi Survivor. And I'm excited to play that on Friday in Resident Evil 4. Now that I'm back in town, I finally get to play the remake. Scarlet Hollow style early access. They have chapter one and there will be more later. Oh man, like I'm still waiting for Scarlet Hollow episode five? Episode five, right? We did episode four. And it's still not there. Uh I think I'm going to have to wait. Sorry about that. Anyway, yes, this is the map of the world. That's what it says here. We are playing Banner Saga 2. We have actually just started. And a lot of big things happen. Um, huge spoiler alert for those who have not played the trilogy. It's my first time going through it. We lost some important people along the way. And my character Rook is kind of like an edgelord right now for good reason. Anyway, this is the map, and the location of her caravan is indicated here. And the caravan recently embarked from Aleo's village and is traveling westward down the Ormsa River. Prior to arriving at Aleo's village, the caravan had hurriedly embarked from Boer's Guard in the wake of the devastating siege laid by Bellower and his armies. Click on Boer's Guard to find out more about it. So what is Beauregard? It is an aging and senile mess of a city that can't remember whether it wants to sell you something or steal everything you've got. Like, that sentence alone is super great. It sets a tone immediately. While Orm's dollar grew early into an important hub of trade, it's a twin city. Its twin city, Beauregard, became the place to buy things nobody else was willing to hawk. It's greatly supported by the potent items harvested in Reynavik and Tistel, and plagued by huge disparities between the extremely rich and the suffering poor. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? The caravan is att attempting to reach Ormsdaler by river on the way to Arberam. Click on Ormsdaler to find out more about it. Oh, we already looked into this. Well, for those who are... Oh. Oh, did I miss anyone? Oh, but man... Spooky visual novel, absolutely fun. I'm going to check that out. So many recommendations. More to the wish list. Paranorma site. Paranorma site. Uh, this was just released last month and it's overwhelmingly positive. How far would you go to bring someone back from the dead? Oh, it's one of those things. Discover the depths that some will go to. In this horror adventure game. I like the style of it. I like the... The filters they have on the images. To make it look... With a chromatic aberration going on. Making it look like... An old film. Or shot with an imperfect camera. Adds to the vibe. Interesting. Alright. But again, thank you everyone for being here. Jesus love. And Jesus life. That's, that, that's what it is. Oh, sorry, I just saw this. From Izzy, after all the Elder Scrolls, Oblivion starts with the actual term of a dungeon as well as the game definition. Yeah. And the fascinations of dungeon design and everything. It's such a great thing. You're generally a fan of visual novels, but you like that this has more gameplay elements. Oh, that's a good thing. To, yeah, that is good to note. I do like gameplay elements. One of my favorite visual novel advent... What, what do you call it? Hotel... Uh, what was it? It's on, it's on DS. It's on a Nintendo DS. Also a Japanese game. 
Hotel Dusk something something. But yeah, I, I love gameplay elements, so it's good to hear that there are gameplay elements in the visual novel. Thank you for that. Okay. So, we're heading for Orm's Dollar. Astrom led some of the first men east. Orm's Dollar was one of the most important places they settled, nestled in the crook where the Ormsar River splits. If Borsgard and Orm's Dollar were twins, Orm's Dollar would be the righteous brother trying to keep his evil twin from hurting anyone else. Oh, okay. Where else are we going? Reaching Arberang, the human capital, is the ultimate goal of the caravan. It is hoped that the walls of the ancient city will provide safety against the deepening catastrophe. Click on Arberang to learn more. So it takes quite a while, huh? So from Beauregard, river, 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 then we're gonna... Are we gonna go down and then up? Or are we going to go the rest of the way on foot to Arberang? Arberang! From humble beginnings to the eventual seat of power for the king, Arberang is the most populated and contested city throughout the human lands. Its towering obsidian walls have been pulled from the depths by the weaving power of the menders. As each new generation of residents builds another ring of walls, the city continues to grow larger, more indulgent, and more dangerous. So many walls, huh? Okay. The world map is covered with many locations and holds much lore. You can explore the map at any time, clicking on locations for more information. I love interactive maps. Freaking love it. More games, more shows should have interactive maps. I mentioned shows because um, The Witcher, the Net uh, Netflix Witcher, also had an interactive map as part of its marketing. And it was interactive. You could click on the towns. And I just freaking love that. So the first game, we started actually here. The very first scene, I believe, was in Strand. And I think a novel, a prequel novel, is also set here. I have not read it yet. I should read it. But there's a prequel novel set, I believe, in Strand, featuring one of the characters we met here. Uh, then they were going up here, I think, the Wandering Road. And Rook and the humans were from Skogur. The second party was here. Then we met here, I believe... We collided at Einar Toft. Big battle. We went down, running away. The long march. Suffering, suffering. No food, no food. Borsgard lost my daughter. Very sad. Now we're in Banner Saga 2. That is a summary. <laughs> Map summary. But see, I freaking love maps. Uh, I don't know if Tolkien was really attributed to saying like something about starting with a map. And you just, like, start with the map, and then... This is, like, top-down world building, right? You start with the map, and then you go zoom in and out and figure out what your story is. Hey, how do I... How do I exit, then? I got enough. Okay. Help! I'm stuck! Okay, when you're... <laughs> when you're finished researching the world map, click this button to return to travel or to camp. Got it. You can return to the map at any time during travel by pressing this button. Hell yeah. Oh, the benefits of the game? It kind of has a light version of the Disco Elysium skill systems. So you're playing an AI. Ah, AI with different sub minds. They give their input that can alter plenty of things. No! Feel free to talk about it. You think he was, but not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if it is really him that said it. But, you know, building a language and building a world. I think that's how we really began, right? Disco Elysium skill set. Man. I need to play Disco Elysium. Okay, as you travel through the world, time passes. The number of days passed is shown here. Each time a full day passes, your supplies will be consumed. Morale drops during continuous travel and when supplies run low. In order to raise morale, you must camp and allow your caravan to rest. The number of days worth of remaining supplies is shown here. If the caravan has insufficient supplies, people will begin to starve and morale will drop. In order to maintain morale and heal injuries, you must rest and camp. Furthermore, camping provides you with opportunities to increase your battle prowess and converse with your heroes. Click here to camp. 
already, we just camped. When a day passes in camp, your caravan consumes a day's worth of supply and morale increases. Click the rent the rest tent now. At any time, you can visit the hero's tent to inspect and promote your heroes. Okay, who made it? Your items are shown at the very bottom of the roster. Drag items onto your units to equip them. Items can only be equipped by characters of equal rank. Promote your units to equip higher rank items. Click on an item for more information. Click on unit stats. Promote ranks and learn about abilities. Click on the ability. Same thing from the last game. Mark prey. Which is cool. Get everyone to attack. Is that it? Oh, what's he wearing right now? <laughs> A let's bracelet. I don't know if it was equipped automatically or if this was already equipped. I think I equipped him with this. Uh, uh, that's like a red flag. So Alette is Rook's daughter and well, yeah. Okay. This is our, these are the people we made it through Banner Saga 1 with. Except for this guy. Is this the DLC? Is this like the pre-order character that you guys were talking about? Trig V? Like I have no idea who this guy is. Trig V is well known in his hometown for being the guy you hope doesn't sit next to you in the meat house or is yelling loudly in the middle of the night or building a collection of spears far more numerous than most men would need in a lifetime. He spends a fair amount of time by himself. Okay. Yeah, I think Fisher was talking about like someone who was a pre-order bonus and he just shows up in the second game. When you're ready to leave camp, you can do so by clicking leave. Talk to him. A strangely familiar man with a spear and tattoos beckons to you. His movements are somewhat odd, almost comical. You wouldn't be confused by Trigvi's presence if you'd supported this journey long ago. Yeah, this is the pre-order guy. This break, this this meta talk, man. I'm sorry, Trig V. I'm sorry we didn't pre-order Banner Saga and I'm only playing it like 10 years later. You wouldn't be confused by Trig V's presence if you'd supported this journey long ago. Also known as pre-ordering. What? <laughs> the man's eyes glaze over for a moment before clearing. He now acts like your old friends. I've lost it. L lost what? My desire to keep going. The same as you. I understand. We have to keep moving. Bah! You don't really mean that. But you did once. And will again. Unless you go down with your ship, Captain. Big V starts laughing. It's disturbing, and as you walk away, you hear him singing. Yellow and blue will lie to you, lie to you, lie to you. What the heck? <laughs> Pre-order, man. <laughs> when you're ready to leave camp, you can do so by clicking leave. Let's leave. Damn, you were just put there to remind you that you did not pre-order the game. Jeez. Or, sorry, Kickstarter backer. Ki back it on Kickstarter. This was a Kickstarter game, right? I, I think. Shouted orders turn several ships towards the bank. You have no choice but to call all the other vessels to a halt as well. By the time you land, a crowd has gathered by the water. Stopping again? A man in fine clothes and missing a hand stands in the center of the others. He smirks as you approach. And here he is. The fain self-proclaimed ruler of us all. 
Are you the reason for this delay? I don't answer questions from backwater scum, no matter how high they've risen in the pond. Then I'll stop asking. Get back on the boat. You don't know who you're talking to, do you? Uh, Rook, you might not remember when we first arrived in Beauregard, but I went with Bolverk to speak with the governor. I do not remember. What's your point? <laughs> well, this is Ruga, the governor. Ludin, the entitled prince of Arberam, who joined you in Einar Toft, steps forward from the gathering crowd. The former governor of what was Beauregard, actually. Careful, prince. Rivers are dangerous, especially this far from your papa's side. The threat causes a few gasps from the clansmen. Ludin's bodyguard, the usually quiet Varl Bercy, growls, but is waved off by the young prince. The Mander and I were just discussing Rook's banner. It'll make a nice addition to Boros guards. That's not going to happen. These aren't the rules of the woods anymore, Rook. You're among men now. Try to act like one. If anything, Rook's banner would join Arberans. Or are you claiming control of the entire kingdom too? I'm just trying to guide my vulnerable prince home with some dignity and proper leadership. But it was Rook who led the fight against Bellower while you hid in your great hall, Governor. Overseeing a besieged town isn't hiding, Mender, just as fighting in a battle isn't necessarily leading. But Rook kept us alive across the frozen waste, he did, cries a man. Saved us at Einartov too, a woman adds. Others join in. Listing your deeds and cheering your name. Then it's settled. No more delays. Rook is our official guide to Arberan, but will consult with me on major decisions. <laughs> this is what Rook is saying internally. I don't want a title or a boss, but... <sighs> Everyone just get back on the boats. Yes, return to the ships. The helmeted guard next to Ruga makes a gesture for only the governor to see. Ruga laughs as the crowd disperses. Friends, your guide has a lot to learn before Arbaran. Jeez, already with the intrigue. Around we go. Ahead, driftwood is collected, creating an impressive barrier for the longships. Alternatively, going ashore has its own risks from whatever might be lurking in the trees. Bank the ships and set all axemen to chopping. Once on land, you, Ivor, and anyone else with an axe start hacking away at the wood blockage. Thudding sounds fill the air. Moments later, Ruga says, Damn, we've got company. As Dredge approach from the woods, you realize others will have to hold them off until you have cleared the driftwood. You're about to enter a battle. If you find the battle is too challenging or difficult, or if you find yourself needing a tougher challenge, you can modify the difficulty settings. I did find the, I did find this game quite challenging. Don't worry, you can change the difficulty of battles at any time before a battle begins. To access the difficulty settings, open the options menu. You can click on this button or hit the escape key at almost any time. What is the difficulty now? Normal.
Turn order. This pre-order man. <laughs> you should rub it in your face. Like, who the hell is this guy? Units move in the order you place them from left to right. This initiative order is very important when setting up strategies. For example, put archers after melee units so that they can stay safe behind your heavy hitters. Drag the unit icon to rearrange their turn order. Okay, who was my original party? Not this dude. Leo is new. What's your ability, friend? Tale worth telling. The character exalts his target the feats of strength and heroism. He's the bard, the scald. His words buff an ally for one round, adding one damage for every two strength the enemy is above the target ally. Huh. The boasts have no effect if the buffed ally attacks an enemy of equal or lower strength, so picking the right target is important. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Oh god, did we lose... Where are the twins? Did they die? Did we lose the twins? Did we leave them behind? I don't remember what happened last month. Okay, uh, I think we yeah I think we lost the twins at some point, right? Okay, we have Ludin. Uh, never used them before. Impale. Normal strength damage before kicking them away. Do we knock back and cause them to bleed if they move on their next turn? Okay. So he seems to be taking a more prominent role this game. Oh my god. Alette was her strongest unit too. And Rook isn't here because Rook is busy chopping away. Makes sense. So let's work with a new party here while we can. Ludin, Prince, you are up. Aleo, the Scald. Ekel, sure. Now, who's the bodyguard? Gris, right? He's the bodyguard of Ludin. What are you? Battering Ram. Okay, push them out of the way. What are your stats like? Oh, he has points available. Okay, boop. Let's add your shield breaking abilities. Okay, Gris, Ludin. He has points available as well. Strength is both damage and power. Okay, what should we add here? Armor. Aleo, no points. Ugh, oddly, wasn't really. I need a I need a powerful archer again. I need a shield breaker archer. But Alette was like our shield breaker. Did our items carry over? What's Ivan? Using Nemegis Ring, two strength resist and plus one will per kill. We need that mender. Sure, let's have a strong character in there. Um, Krumer was who again? Commands the allies, changing initiative. What's Ekel? Guts, leap, bring down axe. Okay. Archer. Can Nid be our shield breaker? Bird of prey. So longbow shoot further than others. Okay. Set up the trap with odd leaf and with an archer shot and a mender. Aleos is scald inspiring feats. Probably put them before Gris and Ludin. Sing. Knock back, knock back, knock back. Let's try this out. Hmm. Nope. 
Nid has no points available. That sucks. What's this? Oh, options. All right, let's try this out. During deployment, you can place your units anywhere within the blue tiles area. You can select the unit by clicking its tile and then deploy it by clicking on an empty blue tile. Once all your units are satisfactory deployed, you can enter battle by clicking the ready button or by hitting the space bar. Oh man, how do I play this again? Okay, we have some armor, heavy armor people here. Archers. I need you to stall the big ones. Can you handle that, Avind? Ivind? So the maps are a bit more complex now, I think. Like, I think this will affect our movement. Alright, you're up. Follow by there. Let's try this. Splitting our party again? Why not? Good caravan morale costs us a plus one willpower bonus in battle, maintains efficient supplies, and rest in camp to improve morale. So willpower is modified by caravan morale displayed here. You can hover over the willpower display for more information. Cool, cool. Rain of arrows over here. How did you... Did you avoid that? Hmm, tale worth telling. Not yet. Get that debris cleared! Hurry! Debris? What debris? Oh, the debris in the water. Sorry, I thought debris in the map. Here we are. This debris. What you gonna do? Arc lightning! Okay. Hey, he totally avoided that. <laughs> Did, he, Did he know where the rain of arrows was? Totally exposed over there. Risky. Can I inspire you with feats of grandeur? Whoa! Okay, he's just tossing the thing. This is a hazard. To avoid it, you can carefully plan your movement by clicking waypoints. Okay. Yeah, 
Yikes. Ow. We can hit. Ow. Who do I want to shoot at in this case? Did that hurt me? Oh, thank God. Ow. Come on. I miss a lad already. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Already down with one. Is it diagonal? Yeah, we'll hit him. yourself? No, you cannot. Oh, cool. He died by just moving around. You hear the axemen cheer as the blockage of wood breaks up and disappears down the river, but the reds have regrouped. One of them looks especially menacing. The fighters around you were tired, but could buy everyone else enough time to safely board the ships. Continue to stand your ground with those around you. We'll join the others when you finish your job here, you say. Those around you laugh and brace for another round of battle. Ah! Bad idea! Who mends the mender, right? Dear God, this is a bad idea. Kidding me already? This game just like first encounter. What happens? This 
like brutal for a first encounter. I mean, I had the option to stay, right? But I didn't, so... This is on me. to go after her. Oh, messy, messy. This is really brutal, huh? Ray lost two. this guy's armor very badly. Oh boy. Mender. Willpower. Uh oh, bad idea. Bad idea. I just left her open. But he's going after him. This is not looking good, chat. Not looking good at all. No willpower, nothing. That is actually a wrong move. Delay, delay, delay. No, no more armor. He's surrounded. Okay, last blow, I guess. I wish she had morale right now. Uh, like willpower right now. Ugh. Would have been so nice to just chain light. 
like lightning that guy. Well, I guess all injuries, like right? everyone will get injured. Get that renown. It's just one, so we can leave him. We can leave him alone. Oh well, he died. One of them already. Or really hurt this guy. Let's take down as many as we can. You can do it, odd leaf. Okay, I can leave. I can I'll weaken one of these guys first. man three one five all right I think I will weaken this guy or I can kill this guy already who's acting next that guy's acting next this guy's acting I get to shoot him before Okay, okay. So let's weaken this guy. There's still a chance! Oh no, if I use chain lighting, Oddleaf's gonna get affected, so... Can I mend her from this range? I can! Okay, Oddleaf. You are dangerously close to all these people. Basically nullify all of their strengths. And we just pick them off one by one. Okay, okay. We got this. Rest again. Oh, boy. Okay, he gave me some breathing room. Now we can kill them one by one. All right, here we go. 
first. Mend. Keep her up. That's not really worth it, but okay. Second. Oddleaf MVP. Rest. You can't get through. Three. Finish him off, Avend. This is yours. Oh, God. Forgot about the horn, but we did it. <laughs> oh, God. That was pretty... I don't know if that is good or not. But Oddleaf, Jesus, just started the turret thing. And I must thank Fisher as well for the tactic of just leaving weak enemies to take up turns. Because the less enemies there are, more, the more moves the... You, you know how it is. It's like, let them waste turns, the weak ones. Lush Pink Penny, hello. Good to know you're back. Yes, welcome back as well. Great to see all familiar faces here. Now you know why last enemies are usually most troublesome ones. Yeah, because they have so many action. They get so many action slots. Some of our heroes are injured. Okay. We might make it down this river to the capital without any more trouble. You look at Ivor, surprised by his optimism. But wow, like that just... I didn't have much faith in the last two remaining characters, but just... You know, that's the thing. with the, If your health doubles as your damage, then you can pull off shenanigans like that. They have no choice but to waste chipping off all your armor. And if they don't go after your mender... Just have your mender try to top up your your armor. And oddly, if it was just turret firing, killing everyone. That is the most kills. Look, in that battle alone, oddly you've got more kills than battle alone than the entirety of Banner Saga 1. <laughs> as far as I can remember, that is the most kills she's had. Because I didn't really use her much to kill people. Usually, I just use her to, like, lock down enemies. But that guy just totally avoided, like, in the beginning. He just avoided the rain of arrows. Like, what? Can you see that? Ivor. And I might sprout wings and start flying. Would that make up for your missing arm? Hey, I get to make jokes about losing my arm. Not you. I suppose that's fair. So, what are you worried about now? I think you should make use of this trainer and this tent that we haul around everywhere. You've led fighters in battle before, but there's always more to learn. So, let's back the ships and challenge your skills a bit. More tutorials? This is the training tent where you can hone your skills by completing- Oh right, I never use this. By completing challenges and through free form sparring, click on trading tent to begin your first challenge. Well, come on in. Let's have a look at you. Sven, the trainer says. After a quick assessment, he says, Yep, looks like you could stand to learn a few things. I've got five challenges for you, and if you could finish them all before we get to Arbarang, well, I'll let everyone know you've impressed me. Ha! Zven's laughter is full of phlegm. <coughs> phlegm, phlegm, phlegm. Let's start with a few of the basics. You think about what he's saying. Well, what do we get? Melons, Chloe. What is up? It has been a while. Great again. Again, I keep saying, great to see all these familiar faces returning. After a month of our absence, great to have you here. 
How is it going, Melons? We just started on Banner Saga 2 and they're throwing me into yet another tutorial. Do I feel up to the challenge? Sure, I'm ready. There we begin, Sven Barks. No, you are familiar to be, Melons Chloe. But thank you for lurking and being around the channel. I really appreciate it. Okay, what is this tutorial about now? Click on an objective marker to see detailed instructions. When Hakon or any Varl warrior attacks a target, all enemies adjacent to the target also take damage. Okay. If your archer is stationary and the enemy's armor is damaged, kill him. Form a shield wall. Position your raider adjacent to an ally. Ready. You're a raider, right? No, they've got reach! Kill an enemy using puncture. Okay. Let's get rid of his shield then. Adjacent enemies, right? But they're diagonal. Damn it. I need to use heavy impact to damage three enemies at once. So I have to bait them. I could kill them now, but... Mm. No, puncture. Puncture, right? We need to puncture. Where's my archer? Why is she not moving? Okay. You... Seven. This counts, right? Wait, what, what? That wasn't puncture? Hold up. Oh, right. You have to be stationary. God damn it. Okay, now I think I can do the three enemy. Uh, okay. I'm trying to do the tutorial here. Kill the enemy using puncture. You. Okay, now they're all bundle, uh, bunched up there over there. I will hit you now. Heavy impact. Heavy impact! Yay! Now we have to kill with puncture. There, now you can kill with puncture. Tutorial complete! You gain renown? Oh no, we earned renown from tutorial. Uh, from training. That, That's incentive to use the training. But I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to play the story. <laughs> Check back frequently for more challenge sessions or spar anytime you like. Okay, we'll do the challenge sessions because they give us a lot of renown apparently. Uh, Yeah, so that's what we'll use it for. Good caravan morale costs a plus one willpower bonus in battle, maintains efficient supplies. Some of your units are ready to be promoted or improved. Use the hero stand to upgrade them. Yep, yep. Now, I think Odd Leaf deserves a. Yeah, we got everyone injured, by the way. One or more of your units is injured. Anonymous Gifter, thank you so much for that gift sub. Melons, thank you for being here. If they receive that gift, enjoy your ad reviewing and cat emotes. You can always grind kills from training, even regular ones. Renan only from challenges, yeah. Okay, Renan only from challenges. I'm after the Renown, so we'll keep an eye out for the challenges. So one of your units is injured. They can still fight, but a penalty to max strength equal to the number of days wounded. The heal as time passes when resting in camp. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You're out. 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 Rest, please. 
promoting Oddleaf, you deserve a promotion, my lady. Okay, you are... No more shield-breaking stuff. Fine. Sky Striker. Avin, can you promote? The 13. Do I want to promote this guy? No, let's promote someone else. Okay, we have Rook. Rook, bring back Rook. Oh, there are the twins. I was wondering where they went. Hmm. Do I, know, do I want to fall back into my old ways? <laughs> I don't know, they're just so fun to use. I love the flailing around. Let's get you up to the, your brother's level, shall we? You use a lot of willpower, so I'm going to give you that. Who do we want? Hakon is a killer. Ivor as well, but Hakon deals even more damage. I still don't know what I could do with Ikel. Whatever. Oh, my Luden. No, Hakon. You are our striker. Oddly, full act first. You try to lock down someone. Bender. You could go last. Avend. Hogan and Mogan go flailing about. Rook, Aven. Okay. As for the items. Oh, sentimentality wants me to keep this. A let's bracelet. But there are better items. You could be the shield breaker, Rook. You could take a pawn. You could, you could take... But yo, know, we lost Alet, who was your shield breaker. So maybe you could be the new shield breaker, Rook. Where where's that item? The plus three break. Did we lose it with Alet? No way. Did we? <laughs> Do items get equipped? Like, what? Uh, do items get lost if you lose the character in the story? That can be. It should return back to your inventory, right? Plus one strength resist. Plus 15 crit chance. Plus two will per kill. Plus 15 dodge strength. Ah! Okay, world hook, plus two break. We had a plus three break. Oh, welcome back, Melons. Sorry about that browser crashing. But yeah, I was just... What happened to my plus three break item? <sighs> Fine. We lost it. It was with Alet. Arm, strength, will. Let's give you uh, shield breaking abilities. World hook. Give that to you, Rook. Even. What's your item? Two strength resist plus one per kill. We need that because you mend a lot, you blast a lot. Hogan. What's Hakon's? Plus one armor? I don't remember these. Oh, oddly, has no item equipped. This is a Hakon, be the killer, man. Strength resist, plus two strength resist, plus two aggro. Plus two will per kill. Two will per rest. Nah. You know, I think I want to give the strength to Oddleaf. Yeah, okay. Oddleaf, rely more on strength. Our shield breaker will be Rook. And we can give... 
plus 3 strength. Hakon, if I promote him, which I will. Now I give you the plus three strength. Boom. Okay, plus two strength, plus three strength. I can promote them again. You have crit chance. Plus two will per kill. Hmm. Okay, I think we're good with this for now. Rest for one day. Let's talk to Ivind. You watch for a moment as Ivind, Juno's apprentice and the bender found nearly dead at Ridgehorn, moves his staff in a complex pattern, repairing some armor. Not a bad festival trick, right? I've seen worse. And I've seen better. Like yours back in Beauregard with stopping Bellower. For all the good it did. Ivan watches you, studying your face before speaking. I know the pain in your eyes. Remember when we left Sigurhol? I just knew if we could wait one more day, Juno would arrive. You were wrong. Like you are now. You saved hundreds of lives. Each one grateful for your leadership. And all it cost me was my daughter. I'd give anything to have her back. Ivan's face falls. You don't know how dangerous that thinking can be. Say nothing. <laughs> Turn up the edge. The mender looks lost in distant memories. His face contorts with pain, sadness, and frightening violence. Frightening violence? Ivan. Are you okay? He glares at you, raising his staff before recognizing his surroundings and growing embarrassed. Sorry, I was... Uh, it's not important. Just be careful making sacrifices. Of course. None of us knows what's coming. These people are the only ones we know we can save right now. It's that simple. Ivan picks up the repaired armor, hitting it with his staff to test it. I'm glad we could talk. But I need to check on the fighter who was wearing this. Man, <laughs> when am I gonna? I don't think Rook is ever gonna be happy again. I can't see that. Resist, uh, rest, not resist, rest. Training, heroes. Okay, great caravan morale causes a plus two willpower bonus in battle. Your great leadership has allowed for ample supplies and caravan rest. Training, rest, heroes, let's leave. Clansmen Forage plus 16. You look at all the food freshly placed in the supply carts. What's all this about? You ask Oddleaf. The clansmen are trying to help as much as possible now, she says. Whenever they can, they'll forage for nuts and berries, or fish and hunt. Haha, <laughs> now they're more useful! She hands you a piece of fruit. They may not know how to fight, but they can keep us alive by keeping us fed. Yeah. <laughs> They're not just a number anymore. Well, they are still just a number, but at least they add to our supplies now. Shouts from one of the rear longships grabs everyone's attention. The quick construction is proving faulty, and the ship is taking on water fast. With dredge on the bank and all other ships almost at capacity, you consider your options.
Mm. Ask shipwrights for advice. No, there's no time for that. Dump supplies to make room on other longships. Have the clansmen board the other ships. What? Good luck. Thank you. We will need all the luck we can get moving forward. Thank you so much for your support. All their money goes straight into Tabletop Cinema and hope we get to use it to grow as a channel and as a community. Thank you so much for that anonymous tipper. And right now, we are going to... I don't even know what's the same Anon, but thank you, Anon. Thank you always for your support. Let's back the longship for repairs. Ropes are thrown to those aboard the sinking longship and it is hauled toward the bank. A few dredge appear, but keep their distance. Huh? Their glowing eyes and strange hums unnerve the caravan as workers make necessary repairs. Huh. They were just staring. Interesting. A crowd begins to cheer from one of the longships as a man struggles with his fishing net. As his catch nears the surface, some voice concerns. You're close enough to make out a large shape in what looks like fur or hair in the net. Fire an arrow into the mass. Keep watching as the man hauls it out. Release your net. What is this? Keep watching as the man hauls it out. Bear cub! Shouts the man with the net. Long dead! What's it mean? Superstitions blow across ships like a gale. Talk of plagues and famine make eyes go wide. You notice Bulwark at the bow at the bow of his ship, staring at the cub and brooding more than usual. Yikes, morale declined. Poor bear cub. Nice, pretty. What's this? Another villager gonna help? A desperate looking lot of adults and a varl stand on the shoreline waving you down. You probably look similar going anywhere with Ivor. They look hungry. But can they be trusted? <laughs> uh, we lost all faith in humanity after being betrayed and losing our daughter. Slow the boats and ask their needs. We will not lose our humanity. The basics, the Varl says. Food. Safety. Trade routes are empty. One of the do one of the two dozen humans of the two dozen humans half look like they've seen battle. We lost a lot of people in the first game, so we can afford to take on some people, right? And we're gonna get betrayed again. No, come on. No, no, let's help. <sighs> come aboard. You'll have food and safety. Remembering Alet and what Alet would do. Everyone carefully files onto a couple of the less burdened ships and starts eating. Clip, the Varl says, which you take as his name and as his appreciation. Morale improve. Plus 12 clansmen and fighters. Alright. Still holding on. Smoke from a village catches everyone's attention and the longships begin to slow. I doubt these scraps of wood we're floating on can hold any more, Ivor says. You hold the governor's gaze on you. You feel the governor's gaze on you. And he slowly shakes his head. <laughs> you want me to turn my back on them? It's not that, Ivor says. It's just that if you try for too much, sometimes you're worse off than not trying at all. They might resupply us for our trouble. Ivor cocks an eyebrow. 
and who will resupply them when they realize the trade routes are blocked by dredge? You give him a look and wave the ships to shore. When the ships land, you and a few others rush toward the smoke, but the closer you get, the stranger the situation. There's no sounds of battle or people panicking to put out fires. Keep going, Bulver growls. We'll see what the dead are carrying. The Varl's comment defies tradition, but so do many things about him. Push on to the village to investigate. A barn is the only thing burning. No one is around. Unusual, Oddleaf says. Some kind of trick. Not sure. But let's look for supplies while we're here. The village is stripped of anything useful. Those around you are frustrated by the wasted effort. Bonebreaker85, thank you for the welcome. The vacation was great. It was really refreshing and re-energizing, and I'm just ready to get back to it. Glad to have you here. Glad to see all these familiar faces. After a slow trudge back to the others, Ruga stands aboard a ship, shaking his head. Some thieving bandits ambushed us and took off in a supply ship while you were on your do-good mission. He says, We'll be even more crowded now. Glad you're at the helm. Damn. It was, we were bamboozled. You know. Oh, there, Clansman Forage. A large clump of hazelnut trees looks like a good place for Clansmen to stretch their legs and gather supplies. Once on land, the children laugh while kicking around leather-wrapped balls of rags. You notice a varl on the edge of the clearing, silently staring into the woods. He's watching a lone dredge grunt stalk... Uh, a lone dredge grunt stalk a squirrel. Might be a hundred of them in these woods. The varl's whisper is still loud enough to scare the squirrel and alert the grunt. It looks like you and the varl... It looks at you in the varl before slowly backing up. Watch the dredge, track it if possible. The grunt runs away. You silently follow, but stop when you discover a clearing with a few small animal bones laying about. Meager meals for one. Near the bone stands a tiny statue of a dragon, and terror courses down your spine. You want to get away from it. Fight your fear and take the statue? No, I think it's maybe it might be cursed. Leave this place and return to the caravan. You think it wise to leave the foreboding dragon statue alone, and quickly make your way back to the caravan. Regardless of your experience, the clansmen seem overjoyed by the amount of nuts they collected. Smiles are on most faces, except for Rook. <laughs> Morale improved. Ah oh, man, I wanted to take that statue, but... Carved rock on a vacant <laughs> island. Asilai's godstone almost looks lonely. Hmm. She's even more beautiful than the songs say. So there's dialogue now in the world. Wow. Is it Oddleaf in the front? Hakon, the two brothers. Oh, it's our party. Oh, what? I can click it. This is like the Gris statues. The clansmen and Varl are admiring the godstone when you notice some are missing. 
It's Bulfer Kinney's Ravens, Aleo says. They looked rather upset by my music and all the singing, he shrugs. If they'd rather hang around that large cart instead of joining us, I won't take it personally. But come closer. Let me introduce you to Asele, the god of streaming waters. She's the curves of every river, a guide for those of us traveling unfamiliar lands. The scald runs a finger over small etchings in the stone. Inscriptions from all those who were lost, but found a way back home with her help. Listen to more of Alea's tale. Some say her stone shows the struggle of leaving the familiar to see what's over the next hill. Aleo looks at the ropes tied around parts of her arm, or parts of her, and smiles. Before the gods died, her stone supposedly stood tall and moved a few steps each year, so people are always trying to make sure she stays put. Aleo looks at you, grinning. Have you the strength to hold her, or a gift with which to entice her? Okay, no wait, okay, we played uh, Rook as kind of God-fearing, but is he now, after the loss of his uh, Alet, is he like, I have no interest in dealing with dead gods? Are we gonna like break that edge meter, like turn it up all the way? No, he thinks Alette would do this. Pull on one of the stronger ropes. You wrap your hands around one of the larger ropes and begin to pull. It feels as pointless as expected, and Asele's godstone does not budge. Suddenly, you are joined by Hakon and Ivor, who lend their great strength. Others quickly join until the rope snaps and everyone sprawls into a laughing heap. Morale improved. You return to where the clansmen have set up camp and see someone, a woman in torn robes, slip from your tent. She blends in with the other families and, after making sure nothing is amiss in your tent, you let it go. Is this the goddess come to join us? <gasps> no audio. Ooh. Raybo can't hear us right now, but I'm just gonna give Raybo a shout out. Rebozan is a very awesome and chill streamer. Please do check their channel out. I believe they've been going through the Yakuza series. And yes, true enough, Yakuza Kiwami. Raybo just finished Yakuza 0, and they are going through with the Yakuza series if you want to join in on that. A very story rich gamer, just as like us. And thank you for being here. Who was that strange woman? Was that Asele? You are welcome, Rebo, if you ever hear this. The number of clansmen and fighters is shown here. If your caravan is assaulted en masse in a war situation, it is the fighters that protect the clansmen, while your heroes fight a tactical battle. It is important to keep enough trained fighters available, but keep in mind that fighters consume more supplies than clansmen and are less effective at foraging. Thank you for that. For the stretch and the hydrate of the care package. Oh, I forgot. Zen is usually the one giving us the, the care packages, but thank you so much. I've just been slouching over because my mic just drops a bit. So much cat hair. Alright. Good to go. It is important to keep enough trained fighters available, but keep in mind that fighters consume more supplies than clansmen and are less effective at foraging. 
Speak to Sven in the trading tent to start trading some of your clansmen into battle-ready fighters. Oh, that's where it is. Well, come on in. Let's have a look at you, Sven the trainer says. The trainer looks past you at some boys and girls eager to learn. Teaching fighting to the young, Sven abuses. They won't go back to hunting and foraging for food, you know. Sure you want to go through with this? We need the protection. Sven blows out all his air through his flapping lips. Then let's get it done. How many you want fighting for you? A hundred new fighters will do fine. We got enough food and water to last us a day and a half? Sven asks. That's what it'll take for me to break them from running at the first sign of trouble. It could happen. Consider it done. Sven whistles through his missing teeth. Morale improved. Right, we got a hundred fighters. Great morale. Let's talk to Hakon. The two Varl look deep in conversation, but Ivor catches your eye and waves you over. So they've all harmed so they've all armed themselves that are running from something, but what? Akon's becoming a dread scholar, trying to understand the motivations of our enemy. It's just strange that we've never seen their women fight until recently. Good thing, too. We might have lost the Great Wars. You think about what to say. Has anyone ever talked to Dredge? Both Varl look at each other. There are rumors that some have tried and been killed in the process. A lot of nonsense. Skull tales about the sound of a dredge's voice making your skin fall off. So there's no so there's been no communication with the enemy. Is that normal? We are too busy killing to worry about the fireside chat. Besides, they only ever make warbling sounds. I guess if anyone has talked to them, it'd be the Valka. But good luck getting them to give you a straight answer. What happened back then? A great deal of killing on both sides. Imagine waking up to dredge attacks every night. Back then, the sun actually set. You'd wake up to a sound and see nothing but glowing ice around you. Ingvar probably told you we never got close to pushing them back to the depths they call home. Actually, Ivor has never said much about the past. Oh? Ivor says nothing, just holds Hakon's stare. Well, he's probably got more stories than you could hear in your short lifetime. Juno says there's a darkness coming. But what Valka say and mean aren't always the same. They speak in riddles and prophecy. Still, it might explain why the dredge are everywhere. Like someone kicked an anthill. Maybe whatever's coming hit them first. Or maybe it's just a new tactic for a new war. If they learn to crack the ground and call a giant serpent, then we're all dead. And just don't know it yet. Well, I'll leave you two to figuring out the big issues. You should know the clansmen have been talking about us killing women and children, dredge or not. It's not sitting well with everyone, which is probably the way it should be. I say if it's us or them, we make sure we are still standing. I'm bothered more by your decision to destroy Einar Toft's bridge. Oh, he remembers that. Let it go, Hakon. It was the best decision at the time. 
to collapse a bridge that cost thousands of our lives to build? If it weren't for your damn horns, Ingvar, I'd swear you were an overgrown human. The two giants begin trading insults and you step away, letting them vent. Oof. Yeah, that bridge kind of didn't do anything. No way to forage for supplies. Rest is good. Heroes are good. Let's leave. Time on the cramped longships is proving too much for the children. They're climbing ropes, interrupting rowers, and constantly leaning over the sides to touch the water. Some Varl and clansmen look annoyed. Oh wow, okay, um... Okay. Rook. Keep your kids by your side. We are at war until our barang. Some mothers give you irritated glances, while a few varls smile in your direction. Regardless, there is no denying the children are safer by their parents' side. <laughs> That's not true for us. Oh no, Alet. <sighs> Cool. You know, it's actually. I'm okay with what happened, though. Like, as much as I would have preferred being, you know, role playing as Alep moving forward, it's usually, though, that, oh, you lose your father figure or whatever, right? But it's been a while since I played, you know, a father losing their kin and then having to deal with that for the rest of the saga. A cool breeze across the water works its way into your cloak. You shift to block the wind and feel something press into your hip. You feel around and find an item in your pack, but do not remember obtaining it. It's that lady! Aceli's trail? Huh? It was Aceli! Or a follower of Aceli who gave us something. Sweet. The sheer cliffs and boulder-strown waters of the southern bank dictate the longship's course. The droning sounds of the dredge accent, accent, accent their quicker pace as they follow your ships along the northern bank. Dust and mist make it hard to see ahead. A hissing, rumbling noise grows all around. Waterfall! Shouts the sharp eyed nid from the bow of her longship. Oars instantly reverse and you nearly lose your balance. Yeah. This isn't good. The world is broken! Uh. Well, I guess we're huffing it. Help! What do I do? <laughs> Can we stop? The roar of the approaching waterfall clouds your thoughts. While all the clansmen you picked up keep the ships from being nimble, Ned's warning allows time to react. It's a struggle, but no long ships are swept over the waterfall. What happened if we didn't have Ned? The remaining ship's rowers pull hard, heading for the dredge line northern bank. In their haste, the vessels smash against sharp split rocks as they push toward the shore. Some fighters are thrown from the boats, sinking in mud under the weight of their armor. The long ships are too spread out to command a unified landing. Amidst the chaos, you look at those nearby. Gris, a stout Varl warrior, and a few others like him look ready to rush the dredge. Bulverk and his company are close to you, hauling their sealed cart off the ship. You consider your options.
Well, Bulverk is gonna Bulverk. Chris, make an opening in the ranks. Without questioning your authority, the stout Varl grunts in agreement. Five other Varl join him and push forward into a dredge onslaught while you ready your attack. Oh dear. What's this? Asele's Trail. Festival beads remind you of the families and traditions at stake. Plus two will and plus two strength. Oh, not bad. I should give that to someone. Um, here, plus two will and plus two strength. Let's put it on... Oh, wait. I can't promote Odd Leaf yet. So no one else can use this except Rook. Plus two will and plus two strength. And Avend. You know, let's give him this. Plus two will and plus two strength. Wait, no, but... He usually blasts. He doesn't really use his strength much, right? So let's give it to Hakon. I know, we Hakon has a plus three strength. Who else is five? Should I give it to Ivor? What's Ivor's item now? Plus two will per kill. Plus two will and plus two strength. Let's give Aselle's trail to Ivor. Oh wait, he can't because it's... Okay, five. Hakon then. Plus three strength though. It's okay. Ivor... Yeah, I'd rather have more willpower. Do we want Ivor or the twins? I could promote Ivor, actually. Yeah, actually, let's do that. There we go. Well, Nid helped us out, so let's have an archer. Akon and Ivor taking point. Rook, Ivan. Okay. Ready for battle. Gris. Why did he advance so far? Don't let his death be in vain. Fight! Oh, we lost Gris. <laughs> we already lost the character due to our terrible decisions. Hardly knew Gris. In the game questioning us, why did he advance so far? Our bad. He was the bodyguard of Luden, right? So he lost. We got both of his companions killed. Gris and the Red Lady. Oh god, we have an 18 boy here. And a 19. Oh shit. Hmm. Alright, hit him fast, hit him hard. acting first that guy's acting next who can I lock down who can I lock down okay oh 
Open up. You're down, almost. Watch your flank. Something skulks from the shadows. What is that? What are those? They're like cockroaches. Ugh, oh, that thing. Okay, we have a 19 boy over there, 13 over here. We can kill this guy in one blow. Let's kill the guy in one blow. Rock. Um, Mand. More of those damn skulkers! Yeah, shoot. Uh oh, 19 boy. Okay, um. Sure, let's kill one of these guys already. Fire. Kill that one! It might make the others run! What are these new units? Ow. Shoot, we have a 13 and a... What do you want to do here? Uh, I need to weaken that guy. Too scary to have a 19 guy coming around, right? What's his ability again? 100% to hit. Strength damage plus one. One break to target. One break added to heavy impact. Got a full horn right now. Oh, bad move. You need to mend. Ah, no, you need to blast. Percentage to hit to damage, sure. 90% chance, let's go. K 
kill one. Who do I focus on? Sure, let's focus on this guy. What are you doing? Ow. Get rid of all this armor, come on. It's gonna kill him either way. If I don't, you know, okay, so no. No mend, just smack. Avoided that, but I didn't. Come on, odd leaf. <sighs> Damn it, we lost the con. Just, that's just like the second or third fight. It's already challenging. Hakon works his way through frantic clansmen on his way to you. You made some tough calls on that river. If those ships had been loaded down with more people, no telling how many we'd have lost. Thanks. Too bad the landing was so rough. Hakon squints into the distance. Their next attack is coming in this time. They'll come in force. Okay, let's... Rook is finally starting at the break. We already lost a lead. We lost Gris. Making bad decisions, he thinks. And now he's finally starting to crumble. And Rook says... I've led everyone to a dead end. No one blames you. All of this is unnatural. Just another sign of everything headed towards the depths. Juno and Ivan approach. There may be a way out of the situation. A gamble, to be sure. But we believe it's our only chance. Gods! It's bad when a Valka's option... When a Valka option is the only option. Worse than that, I... I can't promise everyone will make it. Juno gives Ivan the look. Just tell me your plan. Ivan sighs. With Juno's help, I think I can get us across the chasm. But it won't be easy. For me or the caravan. I need to help Ivan and calm these people. So they are ready to march when he is ready. You need to keep this area clear of dredge at all costs. If they... The sound of a war horn cuts her off and everyone turns to look. The dredge assault begins. Rook, Hakon, you know what to do. I... <laughs> it looks like the force you train is roughly the size of the enemies. This could go either way, but a victory here will protect most of your clansmen. Juno and Ivan move to the cliff's edge. Hakon, surveying the battlefield, says... Some supply barrels could make a few barricades for defense. Otherwise, it'll be a straightforward assault. 
you consider what to do. Sacrifice some supplies for barricades. Men and Varl begin moving barrels full of food and gear ahead of the fighters, but they look your way for confirmation. You realize these supplies will be ruined in the fight. Nod for them to continue. Slash nod. The barrels are barely rolled into place before the fighting begins. Ugh, we barely got to rest. You're out, Hakon. You're in, twins. I can promote Oddleaf. Who do I want to promote? Hmm. <laughs> Ned, let's promote you. Hmm. You shouldn't be getting hit. So that's a... I don't really want to invest in that right now. Sure. Exert. Exertion. Hogan and Mogan. Should I bring Odd Leaf to five? Uh, plus two willpower and plus two strength. That should be given to Nid. Let's save our renown. No, we shouldn't save it too much. Odd leaf to five. Do we have anything that we could give her that's good at five? I could give her Dunter's hand. I was plus three strength. Ivor is using it though. Hmm. Well, for some reason, like Odd leaf is performing better in this game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are no changes to her. It just so happens that I think I'm using her better. So she might be a mainstay in our party right now. Let's promote the twins. Shoot, we don't have enough. We only have 17. I want to promote both, but instead of that, let's just promote Oddleaf. Damn, that's it? I can't upgrade anything else? Except willpower? Hmm. Okay. Let's go! Ready for battle! Wait, what do you have? Plus two strength. Ivor, wait. You're injured, so you, maybe you should give Aceli's trail. No, but your willpower is low. And I might forget to keep I don't want to have to like micromanage equipment, but I know I should. Like when they're injured, then I trade the equipment around, you know. Sure. Ready for battle. Gotta put in the effort, you know? This game is challenging. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna mend the they're gonna mend the world that, that is literally what I said at the beginning of the game ready for some epicness so it's kind of interesting because the last time we did this with Ivan Ivan was trying to bring down a bridge but now we are going to be building a bridge we have a 15 15 boys over here Gotta knock that down. They're over there with the barricades. Supply barrel blocks movement. I don't think this is necessary because we barely use obstacles. It could help our archers, I guess. You could put them here, right? So let's get the twins in flanking position. Coming over here and massacring this one, flailing about. Let's have um, the archers ready to shoot. Advance down this path. We're good. Oddleaf, I need you. To pin them down. Let's 
Did they upgrade Rain of Arrows? Why would you not go there? <laughs> oh right, there are more people there. Alright, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him! Shield breaker! upgraded I don't remember it doing that or I don't remember being able to invest willpower in or maybe I just haven't been investing willpower in that ability bloody flail what that's not fair you didn't get to do that in this game in the last game Finish it. You're up, Odd Leaf. They really are mending the world. Badass. Concentrate, Ivan. You're doing it. Do you guys not want to play? You're not breaking through these barricades. Sure, I'll kill off this guy then first. Oh, God. Hey, man. Oh, he's summoning. He's summoning. Stop doing the shaky thing. Rook, take the shot. Bloody flail it. Yeah, there we go. Almost, but we still need more time. Yeah, how much longer? do rain of arrows over here aha you fell for the trap they're really not breaking down the barricades i should not engage them no but renown xp Do I want the XP?
Yeah, yeah, I want, I want the XP. Bomb. Oh god. This is what I get. This is what I get. What, what, what happened? I meant to do that. That is, that is, that is totally part of the plan. health you finish it off easy oh okay yay plus nine leadership uh, renown oddly is ready to promote Ah, yes, Renown. Give me that, Renown. Juno walks onto the floating land, cradling a kid goat in one arm. Huh? She looks strained, but beckons to the families to follow. What? Why is she cradling a, a goat? You shout for everyone to start moving, but the fighters and clansmen alike remain motionless. Large chunks of earth bobbing in midair like ships at sea as everyone unsettled. It's so epic, though. I can't just imagine the sight. Like, if they had the budget to animate this. Finally, Ivor takes the reins of a yox loaded with a supply cart and walks out onto the first floating stone. It supports the load without issue. We go this way or the dredge kill us all! His words are punctuated by slinger stones thudding into the ground only feet away. Men pick up their children and start running. The caravan animals squawk and bleat in the frenzy. Varl push through the crowd while others fight to follow in their wake. The frightened mob tramples a few and knocks a couple more from the ledge before everyone is strangely pacified. Even you feel a sense of calm settle your nerves. Is this Juno mind controlling us? Melons, thank you for lurking. Thank you for being here. Have a good one. Great to see you again after all these months. Month, this month. Hey, this is so epic. Holy shit. The wounded and elderly struggle to make it onto the floating rocks, while fear of the bridge paralyzes the legs of others. The dredge give chase, crossing onto the bridge without hesitation. How do I know if there are people at the back of the bridge? I'm gonna assume there are still people at the back of the bridge. Because, you know, shouting at Ivan to drop the back of the bridge, that's cold. <laughs> if there's still people, I'm gonna assume there are people, you know. We, there's no time to check. We're rushing ahead. Too risky to drop the, uh, the rear. There's still people back there. Charge into the dredge! You launch yourself into the approaching dredge, swinging your axe wildly and driving a few backward. Other fighters and archers follow your lead, holding off the dredge until the last of the clansmen make it past you. The stones under your feet begin trembling, and you realize it won't hold much longer. Run! You shout to the fighters to join you. Almost all push forward as the stones nearest land fall away into the chasm below. Jesus. Wow! What is happening? This guy's OP! The menders are OP! And they always need an excuse for the Valkyria... Uh, sorry, the Val... They always need an excuse for the Val to be occupied. Valkyr. It reminds me of Valkyria Chronicles. They always have to come up with excuses for the OP units to not be present. Or not be able to be OP on the field. I love Valkyria Chronicles, by the way. Similar gameplay. Oh wait, no, no, it's not similar gameplay. It's a turn-based 
works. Partly real time. Whatever. Valkyria Chronicles is a great series. Do play it. If you like real time strategy games. Turn based strategy games. Sorry. Ivan is growing visibly weaker. Okay. Ivan is growing visibly weaker. Meanwhile, many in the caravan are stunned by witnessing family members fall to their deaths. The effect is spreading. Rip a weeping man away from the falling ledge. Edge. Ask Ivan how you can help him. Run to the back and push people forward. It is insane, Ditsy. You played the first Valkyria Chronicles, can I confirm? Yes, it is such a great... Well, I've only played Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 4. Because the rest are on the PSP, right? But 1 and 4 are basically like... They happen in parallel. 1 is kind of like a sequel. So play 4 after 1. But I highly recommend playing 4. Like if you can. 1 and 4. I can't speak for the PSP games. I just like the sound of this. Rip a weeping man away from the falling edge. Yeah, why not? Rip a weeping man away from the falling edge. You grab a man by the tunic who's reaching out to his fallen wife, violently jerking him off a crumbling rock. Keep going! You shout at him. Morale improved. Your action and authority seem to jar the others from their hopelessness, and the caravan begins moving steadily again. What is going on? He is reshaping the very world. So if you have the Council of Menders focusing, they can just mend the world again. Is that the plan here? Once you get to Arbaran? What? This is so insane. <laughs> oh man, I want to see this like fully animated. Oh, felt off when he tried the demo. Hmm. Yeah, I guess a typical. Um, I don't know. A lot of ja I noticed a lot of Japanese-made games tend to be slow builds, or they don't. A lot of them don't tend to be great until later on. I will say that, yeah. Like, after playing Valkyria Chronicles 1 and then jumping into 4, it's kind of like, uh, what's so different about this? But once you start to introduce new kinds of units, once the story starts picking up, I actually remember more of Valkyria Chronicles... I, I remember more of four story. And I played it one after the other. I played one and then four right after the other. And four stuck with me more. I think it took more risks in terms of the story. Uh, so I do recommend it, even if it's just for the story. The stones behind the caravan are falling faster than the rising ones in front. The rear clansmen are pushing forward in a panic. Bulwark shouts, Knock some of these people over the edge before we all go down! People gasp and flee from him. Yo! We are carrying too much, Ivor says. We've got to get rid of something before that mender drops us all into the depths. You look around and see only people, food, and the massive cart the ravens are hauling. Only two of those are an option. I can predict in the heat of the moment, Bolverk is not gonna dump that cart over the edge. The ravens' cart? No. Quickly, I'm thinking Bulwark is going to be an asshole. Or, you know, I, know, I don't know. For all we know, Bulwark will realize that. But I don't trust him right now. If I tell him to push over the cart, he's just going to push over other people instead, right? He just screamed that out loud. I can't think. I know there's no time limit, but the sense of urgency... The cart is the Ravens' cart. Uh, sorry, the Ravens are the clan Bulwark who just said, put, you know, the black-haired Varl. It's a sealed cart. I don't know why, but it's what the Ravens are carrying. It's what his clan is carrying. 
So it's like to tell Bulwark, hey, push your clan's, um, push your clan's cart over the edge. Chances are he's not gonna do it. I don't trust them right now. This is what happens if you don't trust each other. Dump more food! The ones closest to the supplies look at you, bewildered. We won't need food if we don't make it across! You shout. Slowly, a couple of carts are unhitched and shoved over the edge. Ivan's relief is almost instant and the bridge extends, giving everyone more room and time to move. Oh, 25 supplies. Morale improved. Let's go. Almost there! Ah, almost there! <laughs> this is crazy! Like, if I were here, I don't think I'd be able to step onto these things. This is insane! Just a bit further, Ivan! I really would have loved to see this animated. Oh my god. Ivan's scream chills you as it echoes off the cliff a mere hundred yards away. Again, the bridge shakes but stays together. When Juno looks at him, at you, her lips are trembling. This is killing him, she says. And I won't let that happen. Her tone is dark and cold. Oh no. No time to talk! We'll dump the rest of the supplies! Thank you. We'll replace them in Orm's dollar, says Juno before returning to Ivan's side. The supplies are dumped and the caravan moves forward. We got a lot of supplies, right? I think. This is a repeat of what happened last time. We ended up with zero supplies since we kept dumping them. Oh god. Well, that is exciting. Oh man. Yeah, I did see. I agree. The music, everything, and it wasn't even fully animated, right? It is just going all in. It is just tapping in our heads. It's hard to believe we made it across that chasm. Now we find what's left of Ormstaller. Once a great trade town at the fork of the Ormsa River. How many lives must have been lost here? Oh, it's gone. Looks like a few buildings might have made it. Whatever caused that chasm completely destroyed this place. Well, there goes the, the supplies. <laughs> um, but yeah, like... The, the way it was written, the pacing of the events, it helped make it more exciting. Rather than just like staring at this wide shot of it happening. But you know, the wide shot helped, helped us take in the epicness, the sheer epicness and magnitude of what a mender is capable of. Tearing up the ground, entire swaths of land to build a land bridge. It just, it, it just indicates you know, how powerful these menders can be. And that is just one person. I am, yeah, and I'm seeing now that that is like a tease of what the whole can, the whole council may be capable of. You know, if, if they're willing to help, if they're still together, the world is broken and the menders have to piece it back together. Essentially. Also, they were lifting the ground during the battle. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, uh, that acting like as a timer. It is like you know what I like how it parallels Ivan destroying the bridge. And here he's building a bridge. I guess that's his job now. He he <laughs> he is the builder and destroyer of bridges. All right, we made it across. Unfortunately, the town is destroyed. 
From the massive Varl to the youngest human children, everyone is sapped from crossing the chasm. Tents are loosely strung up, and gear is thrown on the ground as everyone falls asleep. You manage to post a few guards out of habit, excuse me, before sinking down against the crate, wrapping your cloak around you and closing your eyes. Your chest aches as if from a wasp's sting. Feeling around for the cause of it, you look down between your leathery gray fingers, running over a red stone breastplate. Gasping, you open your eyes to find your cloak still wrapped around you. No stone armor underneath. Was that like a dredge thing? Did I dream I was a dredge? The caravan is still asleep, snoring more prevalent than usual. Were you able to drift off for a bit more rest before facing the tasks of the new day? Zen! Haha! <laughs> Three things! Thank you so much for being here, Zen! Number one, hello and welcome back, and how are you and your trip? Oh man, like, we could talk about the trip the whole day, but, you know, focusing on the positives, it is absolutely rejuvenating. And it, I, I've seen sights that were unbelievable. It just being there, like, witnessing, uh, like, the Swiss Alps billowing before, it was billowing with snow before me. It is freaking amazing. Uh, did see all we know is that a giant serpent-like creature just started going crazy and started destroying the world which unleashed most of the dredge who because the dredge were stuck underground so this world serpent kind of creature just started wreaking havoc splitting the world in half um leaving the dredge nowhere to go but up which is why the dredge are up now. They're also fleeing the breaking of the world, as we're finding out. But we don't know the true reason why. Because what's funny is, Juno was talking to like the actual world serpent of this story. And the world serpent's destiny was to like, devour the world, right? But apparently, someone took that destiny away from the world serpent. So like the world serpent's like, yo, I'm out of a job. Like I was supposed to like swallow the world, but now something else is destroying it. What's up? So, it's like, oh, sorry, World Serpent. I guess you're out of a job. I don't know what... So, we don't know what exactly has been sundering the world. Ah, oh, man. But thank you for the posture check and the hydrate and the stretch. We just we just finished a pretty intense sequence. That is a pretty intense one. Oh man, but thank you for the care package as usual, Zen. Always great to have you here. Also looking out for our health. Oh, okay. Face the new day. Insert South Park, they took job me. <laughs> ah, automatically violent because of past wars there was a huge war um where the varl basically the humans in the varl were warring with each other and the gods were like saying hey we don't like our children fighting so let's make another race of creatures to become the enemy that was the dredge so the varl and the humans teamed up against the dredge and then now <laughs> we're all running from something and my prediction is that this is bigger than the three races. Uh, and we're going to have to band together. Because we found out now that they're not just mindless automatons. They are people, apparently. The dredge are people, too. They have children. They have mothers. They have feelings and emotions. They have language. They have culture. Uh, and we found snippets of that in the first game. It's the proto molecule. <laughs> Who knows what it is? But yeah. Um, but of course, the dredge are automatically violent because of the past war. We don't trust each other. We've been killing each other for generations and generations. That's not going away anytime soon. 
Exactly. They got a problem, solution, give them another problem. There's probably a reason why the gods are silent. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. The gods are dead. That's the that's a premise here. The gods are dead or silent or ignoring us. We don't know what happened to the gods. Uh, that's another thing with this world. So it's like we're all on our own. Shit's happening. Where are the gods? Who is left to, you know, to save us but ourselves? Number three, final thing. Oh, yes, Zen, I turned the redeems back on. I hope they're back on. They're back on, right? Yeah, I put the redeems back on. I'm ready to exercise those improvisational creative muscles. So feel free to redeem those anytime you want. Yes, feel free. So I just dreamt I was a dredge. Nightmare, I guess. Long day. Let's rest. Ooh, that is intense. Time check, it's almost 12 a.m. I don't know if I want to keep playing or pause here after doing these heroic challenges. And then, do I want to try Honkai Star Rail? But I want to keep going. That is such an intense sequence. I want to know what happens next. Oh, God. What do I do first? Okay, Zen. What do you want to do with an order? Do you want to loot, explore? Uh, my suggestion is loot, explore, and attempt the challenge. Because you might get items that could be useful for the heroic challenge. So I could do it in that order. But holy crap, that's a lot of gold coins. Another gacha game. Hey, I dropped all my gacha games, okay? My only, <laughs> the only gacha game I'm playing right now is Nikkei. I don't count Limbus Company as a gacha game. It's more of a live service game um, for Limbus Company. So, Honkai Star Rail, I'm just curious because, you know, sci-fi and... It's from the Genshin Impact creators. So, yeah, that is so cruel to create an entire race just to be a villain for the spoiled favorite children. Yeah, right? That, I, that's what I felt. Like, that was their fate. Or at least that's what history was written to say. And I believe that, as we know, history is imperfect. History is still... There's still living history, right? So I'm pretty sure a lot of details were lost or altered to turn them into the villains, perhaps out of desperation to have a cause to fight for. They say the gods designed the dredge to be the enemy, but for all we know, oh, here's a theory. Here's my theory now. I'm thinking the gods created the dredge, Varl, and humans because they wanted them to live peacefully and to work together and happy times, right? But maybe something got lost along the way. The races started to fight. And the gods were like, We are so disappointed in you. Goodbye. <laughs> then they left our world. And that's why the gods are silent. Because we can't stop fighting. That's another angle that I'm thinking is possible. So we have to take it with a grain of salt. The history that we receive the history that we're we have now is human and varl history not dredge history and i think that's a very important thing to talk about because we know nothing about the dredge they've been suppressed and it's only recently that we found out that there were dredge babies dredge mothers and dredge culture so that is a big what so we don't know their story so i'm hoping we get to know more about the dredge as we go exactly the favorite children won so they wrote history. Honkai Star Rail gotcha with turn-based strategy. Yeah, I'm not a big turn-based fan, but I was interested in Honkai's world, but I couldn't get into Honkai Impact. So I'm hoping Star Rail will be a nice intro to it. Let's begin, Zen, with loot. Please roll a d20. If you roll a 20, you get a shiny. If not, you get a nice trinket. And I note it down. Which reminds me, I should put this all in a Google Doc so you can access the Tabletop Cinema Annals. Where I record all of these findings. Uh, where do I... Where do I put that? Tabletop Cinema... Lore Smith. We have your record here, Zen. You're going to get a humble search. Oh, sorry. I think it's... 
uh, roll and then space 20. In the first game, how did the dress shell that you found turn out? That hasn't come up yet, actually. I'm curious now. Eight! Not to worry, Zen. You still get a consolation prize with a story. Drawing from the deck, we have this card for you, Zen. The first card of the month. Please roll 2d4s. I think I have the spam filter still in place, though, so... I can roll the next d4 for you. Okay, we have four. So you found a soot covered. And I can finish this for you. So I believe last we left your story, you were scouting ahead with the help using a familiar, a hawk specifically, and you found the creature that Fisher was able to befriend, but lost sight of it. But you earned some renown being quite good with a hawk. And you were given, I believe, a pouch beforehand. You were get and you discovered some bizarre knobbly flock of chickens as well, which was just a fun little tidbit for a world building. You all, you fall you found a tattered and empty leather pouch last time, and today you have found a soot covered faded floral fresco. Oh, I like this. Okay, let me write that down. So before going off on your journeys, this town has some history to it. In the small chapel nearby, which, as you realize, this chapel is not even in use, and it is dedicated to an unnamed god. No one knows what the chapel was used for, but it is a remnant of what came before. The town that you're in was built on ruins, and this soot-covered, faded floral fresco is one of the few remaining pieces of the old world and it depicts as you can see very roughly it's soot covered it's difficult it hasn't been maintained well because it wasn't as a frontier town it wasn't exactly a priority to maintain such finds to the much of the disappointment of some scholars from the big city um but this fresco depicts what looks to be humanoid figures. Seven of them. Before this creature that you've never seen before. It's very abstract. But it looks like an amalgamation of different animal parts. It's hard to tell what it is. In fact, it kind of reminds you of the creature you just found while scouting. But you do see seven humanoid figures bearing what seems to be arms. Bearing weapons. And they are before this creature. But it's hard to tell uh, because it is so damaged and so worn. Were they fighting this creature? Or were they fighting with this creature? What is the relationship between that? Some people, they like to speculate what it was. And a lot of the stories that surround it is that it is a, the, 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 pre, the prevalent story that happens. Uh, the, the prevalent story that surfaced. Um, from the speculation of people, you know, drinking some ale, speculating about what it could mean. There was a story about, like, seven legendary heroes who faced off against a terrifying beast which was out to devour the world. And so the seven heroes made their stand here in this town and fought back and fought back that creature which sent it into a long slumber. So... Obviously, they try to capitalize on that to sell merchandise to tourists. But you don't know if it's true or not. But that's a story that happened. So you got... <laughs> that is a soot-covered faded floral fresco. I'm going to write that down. Soot-covered faded floral fresco. In fact, as you were observing it, one of the merchants there... Um, Gives you a sample of, of a rock claiming that this rock was from the old world. I will give it to you as a, as a, a charm, a luck charm. And you can see that it seems to be painted like 
it, it seems to be in a similar design as the faded floral fresco, but it's obviously newer and obviously fake. But, you know, people try to make a quick buck here. That is interesting. So soot covered faded floral fresco. Of course, feel free to add any details that you wish. I'm just like coming up with this on the spot. But if you have better ideas, I am open to them. Because we are writing this story together. All right. Next, we are going to go for a wilderness, wilderness encounter. So this one, you don't need to roll. We just unveil more about the world that we are inhabiting. Wilderland Voyage. And -da -da. Let's go for the D4s again, please. You have this card. You've set off on your journey after receiving that stone, observing that fresco, hearing the stories around the tavern fire. But now, in the, wilder in the wilderness, you encounter disrepair but not abandoned. Yes, it is. Not, it is. They're trying to. It's maintained in a disrepaired state to attract tourists and scholars. So you have what? You have a two, and I have a four. And as you set off on the road, what do you find? A bright chromatic runic necklace huh you know what I think this kind of relates to that fresco that we just picked up oh okay what could that be you see out of the corner of your eye before leaving these ruins you see something jutting out from the mud it just happened to catch your eye, perhaps when you took a leak or went to talk to one of the merchants, but this seemed to pass, and no one seemed to notice this. Interesting. So, out of the dirt, you fish out a bright chromatic runic necklace, and this, compared to the stone you just, the trinket you just received from that merchant, which is obviously fake and more of a, you know, just a to a tourist item. This looks like it's as old as the fresco itself. And in fact, there's a partial inscription on it which relates to what you saw in that fresco. Though it is indecipherable right now, it is in a, it is in a language that you do not understand. But the colors, the motifs, it's quite intricate. And the ruins match what was on the fresco. Ah, what an interesting find, Zen. Bright. And you notice, actually, that the sun is down currently. It is quite dim. And yet, this runic necklace seems to hum with a bit of magic. And it, gl it glows ever so slightly. Nice. Bright chromatic plus runic necklace. All right. And finally, we're going to attempt your heroic challenge then. The fate flipped our dice after your turn. <laughs> Don't worry. Every result tells a story. Or so I'd like to believe. Your challenge, brace yourself, Zen. You have a reward, I believe. A ruler becomes loyal to you and aids your mission in any way they can. So you have a favor owed. A favor is owed to you by the ruler of this town because your successful scouting mission. Remember that. So your challenge, please choose. Will you use a song or dance to gain an advantage? 
or steal or enter using clothing or illusion. And what would be the context of this? So you just choose which seems to be an interesting story beat for you. So song or dance to gain an advantage. Are you going to use a song or dance? Or both. <laughs> Alright. Use song or dance to gain an advantage. Okay. Remember that runic necklace you just found? Well, after you picked up, after you plucked that from the ground, that merchant was eyeing you and noticed it. And suddenly, before you know it, you are accosted by some rough looking men. And they're insinuating that you should give up this necklace or go packing. Or get packing and get out of town. Their eyes are filled with greed. And now it is up to you. To try and use song and dance to gain an advantage in this situation. Please roll your d20. The DC, the, the number to beat is 10. But don't forget that you have a favor to use, which is an automatic success. Or you can use some of the items that you have. Okay, that's a fail. <laughs> Will you use your, your reward, your single-use reward, the ruler who is loyal to you and aids your mission in any way? Will you use this up to guarantee a success? Or will you let them drive you out of town and you earn no reward? Okay. Just when things seem to get bad and they start to get physical with you, you hear a whistle which stops immediately. Which stops them immediately. And they seem to recognize what it is. And you recognize the whistle of the leader of this town. The headman. He doesn't even say a word. He glares at these two merchants accosting you. And they scamper away. It seems that they respect or fear or both this headman. He turns to you with a gruff voice. He's quite... He, he's an elder, actually. And yet there's a vigor to him that is still present. And he looks to you. Are you okay? I must apologize for... For the conduct of these merchants, they tend to get desperate. And you can tell that there's this unspoken bond between you, that the favor is, the debt is paid. And you maintain, and, and you maintain your good relationship with this ruler. Good job. You get the reward. As compensation for your troubles... You earn this reward. Ta -da! Please choose. Oh god! Become a member of a local council or crime syndicate. Or... It's not focusing. An attack is an automatic hit or deals maximum damage. Please choose your reward. <laughs> this is just a random card. And yet... Interesting. One. Okay. You become a member of a local council or a crime syndicate. Uh, your choice. <laughs> okay. The head man offers you a place. He, he knows your worth. He knows that you're an honorable man. He knows you're a skilled adventurer as well. And he offers you to join the local council as a, how do they say, as a consultant. All right, a local council. So what happens here? Bonebreaker, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you next time.
take care. By the way, everyone, Bonebreaker does stream. So go ahead and please check Bonebreaker channels. Bonebreaker's channel out. Did I do that correctly? Dust Force. Interesting. So please do go check out Bonebreaker. He is a fellow streamer. And thank you again for being here. All right. Let me put your reward here, Zen. So you... These cards, man. They're so interesting. Okay. So congratulations, Zen. Just in the nick of time, the mayor helped you out. And now you are... An honorary member of the local town council. This town, as he explains to you, needs all the help it can get. It needs good, honest working folk to make this town into something. Because as a frontier town, it was kind of an experiment as well for expanding the borders of the kingdom. And it was it hasn't really been going so well, as you can see with... Um, dishonest merchants some corruption that they mention and not to mention the dangers of the wild and bandits and all sorts of other issues that's happening all around and the fact that you help them scout and you haven't caused a ruckus in town the the mayor wants to give you a chance so welcome <laughs> you are now a trusted member of this town what will happen and what will you use to, uh, what will how will you use that reward in the future? That is all up to you. Thank you for redeeming that, Zen. It is nice just coming up with a random story right there and there. Let me just note this down so I don't forget. Use a song or dance to gain an advantage. Your words didn't exactly get through to these people, but that's why your reward came in handy. April 25, 26. Oh, 25. No, 26, 2023. April 26. Striking that out. And your reward was become a member of a local council. Very nice. <laughs> the Vanua story continues. Who knows? We're all inhabiting the same world. I don't know where this is going. I'm trying to connect it to people's uh to people's like backgrounds. What happens though if you're tasked to eliminate the creature and then the creature which Fisher befriended and then you run into Vanua who, who's been trying to I, last we last we left you, Vanua, you were helping out a young woman who just lost her brother, fighting one of those bile bears. That's what happened. So, let's loot. Please roll your d twenties for your loot, Vanua. Oh yeah, I need to put this in a Google Doc. Because you can also check, because I may have made mistakes. I'm trying my best. Sorry, it's just roll 20. Uh, no D. Roll the what on a D20? Oh, sorry. It, yeah, it's just 20. Three. Okay, you just get a trinket. And for your second one. First, though, let's... I'm just shuffling the decks again. Okay, your first loot. Shuffling now. Oh, for sure, Ditsy. No problem. You know what? Let's... Do I have Sirenscape installed? Ah, I don't. I should have it installed better. Okay, I'm going to put on something just while we're doing this thing. Uh, ambient Tavern Music. Ambience, ambient tavern. <laughs> this 
This sounds a bit dramatic for a tavern thing, though. Oh, it's just the intro. I'll, I'll find better ambient stuff next time. But... <laughs> Alright, Vano, your first item. Oh, we're here looking for a tab. Well, I don't know if you can hear it right now. But I just like pulled this cozy tavern. It's from the Vault of Ambiance. You prefer the wind sounds from the game? Oh, okay. So let's roll a d4. I'll roll the next d4. Two and a three. To Vanua, after saying goodbye and wishing the adventure, the young adventurer, well, you buried her brother, gave him a proper send off. You also put a warning out. Oh, wait, no. I'm getting confused now. You were the bile bear, right? Or was that Fisher? But anyway, you get a. Uh, this is why I have notes. I should fire shit. Vanua! <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. You were. He, uh, last you encountered was a maggot, inf maggot infested human remains, thoroughly worn ritual candles, and severely tarnished deformed tin cup. You found a ritual site. Yes. And you found maggot infested human remains behind that site. Alongside a tarnished and deformed tin cup, which seemed to be used in the ritual for some reason. You still haven't surmised what that ritual was for, but you cannot ignore the fact that there is a maggot infested corpse just lying out here in the wilderness. You also found an ever burning oil lantern last time, but in that ritual site, what else did you find? Three and four. Uh, what did I roll again? Sorry, two and four. A green ceramic dwarven chisel. Okay. Green ceramic plus dwarven chisel. Still, before we leave... Oh, I rolled the three. Sorry, sorry. A green ceramic wildflowers. How fascinating. Okay. Green ceramic wildflowers. Another thing you note, besides from the... Uh, in the ritual site. This corpse, now that you are... You come closer to it, you realize that it is being surrounded in an almost unnatural way by wildflowers. The wildflowers are arranged in a pattern, which at first glance seems indecipherable, but once you observe more carefully, it almost sh is in the shape of a star. And more than that, it is quite a breezy, windy day today, but the wildflowers don't seem to be swaying in the wind, and that's when you realize that they are actually green ceramic now whether they were petrified as the remains of a spell yes that is one thing you could surmise who knows was it an effect of the ritual or was it used as part of the ritual we don't know all that's left as a witness is this maggot infested human very very interesting green ceramic wildflowers you, of course, that gets added to your inventory. It is easy to pluck. And there's a sense of... You know, once you... T if you touch the green ceramic wildflowers, they are cold to the touch. As in, almost like an ice cube. Petrified. Very interesting. All right. Ah, Ditsy, the name generator... Oh, I forgot to turn that off. But it's usually for games that have... Um, where we can name stuff, like name characters, name towns, and the like. That's what the name generator is for. So if you would like to rename 
or name something or a character, feel free to redeem that. That came to life with a game called Wilder Myth. Because Wilder Myth, there was a lot of there were a lot of opportunities to name items and people. Wilder Myth is a fun game. I highly recommend that as well. All right, your second one. Wait, how many times did you loot, man? What two, right? I, le I let it to two. All right. Okay, another two. No worries. Cast it in a green ceramic, but yours is interesting. That is also... That's why we're not sure, Zen. It could have been casted in green ceramic as part of a ritual. It might not even be wildflowers. It could be just a model of wildflowers. But the unnerving thing about it is that it was arranged in a pattern surrounding this human vessel. And it was cold to the touch. Another trinket, though trinkets are quite fun. Please roll your d4. You're rolling a one. One and a four. One and a three. I don't know why these cards keep showing up as ritual stuff. We're gonna go buy the cards. We're gonna believe in the heart of the cards. This is, uh, I don't think I have what it takes to be famous, Thress talking, so bye-bye. <laughs> okay, we're gonna believe in the heart of the cards. This is destiny unfolding before us. Pitted silver ritual candles. Now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you remember you had a severely tarnished deformed tin cup and then you found green ceramic wildflowers and now you found a pitted silver ritual candles Thoroughly worn ritual candles, maggot and pheasant human remains. What does it all mean? Now these pitted silver ritual candles, they are similar to the candles that you found. However, they seem to be, again, pitted with silver, but in a seemingly very, it's like a random pattern. Why would a candle be pitted with silver? What went wrong or what went right? But it seemed, it almost looks like these ritual, these set of ritual candles, it looks like almost like an infection of silver. It seems like someone's been transmuting metals, objects. Ah, who is this person even? <laughs> Could this be the caster? I don't know. The story remains to be written, but. As you wonder what might be going on with all this ritual hullabaloo stuff, Vanua, your encounter. Will you conceal or discover a secret passage or surprise or warn a non-combatant? Interesting options. I can already start to imagine what might happen. So, so you are going to, okay, a secret passage. But are you going to conceal this or discover more? Okay. You choose to press on and discover. Spending enough time here, you notice the odd. You, you notice in this area what stands out. And true enough, it doesn't end here. The trail of silver, the pitted silver candles, leads you to a corner of the clearing where you find. What? Please roll to see if you discover anything more. It's a challenge, after all. To meet it, it's 10. If you want to use your other eye, uh, you passed anyway. 
Oh no, I'm so sorry, Ditsy. No. But thank you for being here. And as always, the, the adventures are always here waiting for you to continue. I'm excited as well to see what comes next. I am interested to see where we can take your stories. I'm really sorry we didn't get to get there. Uh, but good luck with the test, right? That's the important thing right now. Do well with that test. I believe in you, Ditsy. And we will continue your adventure once we catch you next time. Thank you so much. Take care. All right, so discover secret passage. You didn't need to use any of your items, Banoa, because you already succeeded. Now let's see what they're, no, I'm trying to figure out what might happen. Let's see what your reward is first. So there's a break in the terrain, almost as if something was left behind. Most people wouldn't have seen it, but you were. So will you get a celebratory coin or statue is made to honor your achievements? Oh, a celebratory coin or statue is made to honor your achievements or automatically succeed your trading or crafting check. Hmm, we'll have to fluff this up a bit. So we can like reskin or refluff things if it doesn't exactly fit, but please choose your reward. Yeah, so thinking about the second one. Automatically succeed in crafting. Alright. So here's what I'm thinking. Yes. Not only does this place give you inspiration. Hidden hastily in the woods. Uncovering that break in the terrain. Pushing the brush aside. You find the actual implements which are used in the ritual. And you can tell that these, while its original purpose may have been lost, whether it was used for ill, for weal or woe, for good or evil, these tools are in your hands now. And you can tell that they will be very useful if you have need to craft something or create or even destroy. So who abandoned this ritual? Why were these implements hidden here? What were they used for to begin with? Very interesting. So yours is automatically succeed on a check. Automatically succeed, right? on a crafting. Automatically succeed. Oh, that is your first heroic challenge. You were discover a secret passage. You succeeded on that and automatically succeed on a crafting check. Very nice. April 26, 2023. All right, leaving this very mysterious place. Finally leaving from the ritual site. What you find on the road? I swear to God, if it's another ritual site, I don't know where you ended up in, Vanua. You've ended up in Cult Town. Ta -da! Exploring the wilderness, you find. Please roll your d4s. Ooh, look at these interesting options. Widening stairs, dryad queen's crown, wedding ring, peacock feather. Okay, you got a one. And I got a two, so one and two. You find, oh wow, a ghostly billowing Dryad Queen's Crown. What the heck? Alright, let me add that first. Ghostly Billowing Dryad Queen Crown. Ooh, 
Ooh, okay, okay. I think I have an idea. I have an idea. Um. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. So after disturbing this piece of land, uncovering the tools, as you put them in your pack, you feel a kind of weight lift off your shoulders. And a chill pass through your spine. And as you leave this area, you catch a glimpse of an ethereal figure, a ghostly figure. It looks like a half human, half horse, almost like a centaur. And yet the features are difficult to really tell. It is a ghostly figure, an apparition. The expression is shifting ever so slightly. It's hard to pin it. But there's something regal about this figure. And it is bowing, it is certainly standing over the dead human corpse. It seems to lock eyes with you. And above its head, you notice billowing with the ghostly visage is what seems to be a crown. It is made of thorny vines, but shaped in a beautiful pattern with wood panels and what seems to close akin to an, like an elvish script kind of inscribed. That is more solid than the rest of the figure. And when it looks to you, it is not a look of judgment or fear of anger. It is looking at you with thanks. It is bowing its head ever so slightly and you feel the cold kind of dissipate from your spine as it is filled with a very welcoming warmth and you are beckoned to this creature which just simply billows and disappears in the wind leaving behind this beautiful crown it gently falls to the ground before you and you can feel the weight of its history as it solidifies and you're able to pick it up in as you've heard from probably stories around the land the dryads no longer exist and yet this crown that you wear uh, that is crown that you hold right now in your hands is well is a remnant of that lost civilization And as you take hold of this crown, those ceramic, um, those green ceramic wildflowers, the green ceramic seems to melt off as the wildflowers bloom. One, two, three, several of them now filling this land that was once cursed with whatever foul alchemy happened here. And now you find yourself in a bed full of wildflowers. And thus, it takes over. The maggot-infested human remains serve as the fertilizer to these wildflowers. All remains of that occultic ritual gone over, taken over by nature. It can hear the whisper of a long-lost language speak to you as you leave the area. And the crown, for what its purpose? Well, that is yours to determine. <laughs> interesting. That is very interesting. We just kind of wrapped up that little quest arc over there. <laughs> With a ghostly billowing dryad queen crown. Thank you for redeeming these things. Uh, I'm still thinking what it could all mean. Of course, it's up to you to really interpret it. Change details. Feel free. Again, I'm going to put this all in a Google Doc. Uh, I realize as we continue to add to this, I would like um, it to be viewable by the community. So it helps out. So I'll be putting a Google Doc together. Um, I'll put the link out. And all your records will be here. So thank you for redeeming these things. It's nice just being back in the game master seat for a while 
I swear I have the notes here. Look, I'm not lying. <laughs> See, it's my Evernote. But it is growing. The annals are growing. I didn't realize people would be redeeming it so much. And like, we have so many already. We're going through the cards so quickly. All right. Oh. Competing all. Whew. Well, that is a nice break. We just... Going back to this, that is insane. We just crossed a freaking chasm with amazing work from Ivan. Wow. You know, let's play a bit more. Let's see what happens next. Uh, but we should be winding down soon. But I want to keep playing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll play like Honkai Star Rail or something just to see what it's like. But this is such a huge epic event. Man, I don't know how they're going to escalate from... Uh, I'm sure they can escalate from here, but holy crap. What a way to open Banner Saga 2. Just insane. That is just an insane sequence. Holy crap. Okay. Ruins. Oh, thank you. And I, I know it's kind of difficult because I'm the only one talking. And it's hard to really like get a one-on-one -on -one conversation going on but I know like I, I just hope these random ideas that are coming together are entertaining because I I'd also love for you all to be able to have input like just don't be afraid to like if you don't like the idea or if you want to add some stuff to the details feel free to do so like I'm not the only one writing these things um, but I hope it's it serves as an inspiration for something and I didn't know how what was going to happen. <laughs> like I decided, you know, I have these cards, may as well use them. But it's surprisingly been rewarding for me as well as I start to imagine a world coming together, like a section of a world coming together. And now it's like suddenly we have dryads who are now extinct. What's the meaning of this crown? Some creature which looks like something in an old uh, fresco. Oh, like, what's happening in this place? There's so many differences in your inconsistent story. Yeah, it... Because you're all in different places right now. And we're just like... It'll all come together, I believe. It'll all come together. I don't know. We'll see. But that is why we're all here in this together. It is just... Improvised. And I hope at the end of the day, we'll come up with something entertaining like in my head these are like legends or myths that inconsistencies are expected and what is the truth we can never really tell you are in charge of the truth you make your way across the broken bones of this former trade town curious as to what's inside this building which is still somewhat intact the structure groans as you enter and you hear yourself whispering this isn't worth it after a quick survey of the room, only two things stand out. A stone with strange etchings resting on the broken mantle, and footprints in the dust near a small door in the wall. A gust of wind blows up from the chasm, the whole building creaks. I know you're there. I'm here to help. A small door creaks open, and a child looks at you. Come here, you say. This place isn't safe. Her red hair catches the light. Oh no. Alette? You shout. I can save you! Okay, that's a bit much. You reach for the child who is terrified by your appearance and words. She slams the door closed and building shutters, and the building shutters. Wooden planks around you snap, and you barely have time to flee before a large section of the structure crumbles off the cliff? Oh my god. You sit in the dirt staring. Emotions knotted in your throat. Did we kill the- Did we kill the kid? Okay, a large section just fell. The, the kid did not fall. Okay. But what I'm interested in, like, now that you mentioned, like, you brought up the differences in this, like, 
disjointed story. Yeah, like the cards just sent all of you on different paths. Like, all of you have s different arcs at this point. I wonder if they'll get to a point where they start to overlap. Ah, interesting. Ivor stands stoically by Ivan's pallet, watching the menders breathing. It took a lot out of him. Out of everyone. No doubt. A lot of families lost members out there. So why even follow me? I get people killed. I'm not doing this again. If you can't see the number of people out there still alive because of you, nothing I say will change it. With nothing to say, he looked down at the resting mender. The spell weaving took a toll on him. He looks as bad as me. Before Ivor can respond, Oddleaf abruptly enters the room. Good, you're here. It's the ravens. They're trying to leave and some of our people want to go with them. What? Why? We nearly went over a waterfall and ships and lost a lot of people following some Valka across floating rocks. I'm not saying any of that is your fault, but people are scared. If they made up their minds to go, they'll leave whenever you're not looking. And the ravens have been hoarding supplies this whole time, and they're trying to take off with them. Yep, that sealed cart. Juno and Hakon are trying to talk sense to Bolverk, so it's desperate. Yeah, overlapping sounds good, right? And I was also thinking, since some people, since you guys, some of you are in chat as well, I was thinking that's easy bonuses. Like if someone attempts a challenge and you're all in chat, just by being here, you give each other like a plus one or plus two, depending on what you do, right? So you can like help each other out. Like I'm thinking of how to get to those points. But I guess right now we're like world building a bit, setting some pieces in place. And who knows, perhaps a card will send us on a collision course. And I'd love to see y'all like come together and help out. As you make your way to the door, you turn to look at Ivor. Another Varl isn't going to help that situation. I'll stay here with the bender. Oh shit. Now stand down or you'll be missing more than your horns. No odd no is it no sound? Stand down? You Son of a yox! Is there not supposed to be... Huh? Oh, that's a shame. There's no... There's no audio. I can't calm him. His fury. Here they are. Just as I said. Oh. Why isn't there audio? Is it a bug? Bulverk lost his mind! Take him down! I think we're on our audio's bug. Oh my god! <laughs> oh that's that's right, Zen. That's that is so right. We were muted. What the hell? We just totally missed out on some awesome. Oh god, can I watch that again? This, right? It's okay, we'll choose the same things. Okay, okay, we can watch it now. There we go. Now stand down, or you'll be missing more than your horns. Stand That's how it sounds down, like. You son of a yacht! Oh, okay. Shoot. <laughs>
That is pretty cool. Ah! He attacks twice? Alright. Oh, man. Hakon. We also have the shield maiden here. Will we be able to recruit them? What is going on? Who's this? Hey, you're back! It's the red woman! What have you done? It worked! Bolvark, hear me! Where, 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 the red lady, how she... I guess she came back? The clansmen chatter as Juno converses with the dazed Bolvark quietly. Hakon grabs her attention. Get ready for a confusing conversation. Yeah. He motions to Irsa, one of Prince Ludin's bodyguards, who is wiping her pitch-covered hand with a rag on her way over to you. Good timing, witch. How is it you're still alive? Hakon, me being a witch was our secret. I'd hate to have to poison you. Whoever this woman is, she just completely stunned two Varl within moments of each other. Didn't we meet her already? How come... Wait. Oh, no, 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 no. We... Uh, Rook has not met the red woman yet. It was... We, we lost her when we were still playing the Varl side of the story. So this is the first time we're meeting. friend of yours, King Hakon. King? Hakon attempts an enigmatic smile before answering you. Rook, meet Prince Ludin's bodyguard, Irsa. I just assumed she died when we lost her. Well met. If there's anything I can do. Irsa holds a finger over her lips to silence you, and then winks. You watch as she departs and finds Prince Ludin among the loitering clansmen. Strange, that one. Stranger than Bulwark, being as tough as a damn swinder. Heh, <laughs> I should have mentioned he's a berserk. Probably the last of his kind after Einar Toft. The Varl King laughs at your blank look. Berserkers lose themselves in the fight. They are strong as cold bears and just as wild. Hard to save their friend or foe in a fight. So Mender magics us over a chasm, and you two decide to kill each other. I wasn't going to let him take our supplies without a fight. Caught him trying to take off with supplies he tucked away. Couldn't let it happen. Cool anger glistens in Hakon's eyes. When he looks at Bulwark. Why does he want to leave? Says you've been bad luck ever since arriving in Beauregard. I can't say I blame him for that. The two of you actually laugh for a moment. I bet his main reason for leaving is just to be in charge again. Run jobs and keep his ravens in line. Like most of us, he's looking for something normal to grab onto. Whatever his reasons, I hate that some of ours are going with him. We've done what we can for them. Be generous and split your supplies with the ravens. Punish them by giving them nothing. Offer the ravens enough supplies to last a couple of days. <laughs> like, will this even re be good for us? We, we, we already used up all our resources. Whatever, you know, let's, let's be generous and split your supplies with the ravens. Half. 
there's kindness in being dumb. Paul works a varl, so this is my call. We'll give him some, but not much. You shrug. Now, let's see what we can find in what's left of this place. Chapter 9. Cast the hone into the air. The hone? What's happening? Huh? Oh, they did split off. And we're gonna play them. You glare at the clansmen and Varl settled among the ruins of Ormsdaler and feel the rumbling growl in your chest. Everyone will be ready to leave as soon as you start walking north. I won't fall for that stupid fire trick again. Volka ignores your comment. <laughs> the new members from the other caravan would probably need a beating or two. Think it was stupid of me to challenge Hakon? Not really my place to say. Since when has that stopped you? The shield maiden grins. We could have at least waited to hear their plans first, then decided. Okay, now we're playing as... Wait, as Folka? Uh, no, no, as... Sorry, we're as... Bulver. Their plans almost took us off for... A fain waterfall! That waterfall surprised us all. Of course, it'll be nice to be on our own again. Uh, we make it to Bindal, get a job, and things get back to normal. We always survive. And what about all those dredge? If they make it across that chasm, it'll be war. War's always been good for business. Folka smirks, but her face hardens as Juno approaches. Bolferk, could I have a word with you? Haven't you said enough? What's to keep me from cutting you right here? A job opportunity that only I can offer. Folka's eyebrows rise at the sound of work. I'll finish packing. What do you want? I know your ravens need work. Without work and coin, that banner of yours is worthless. You step towards her, towering above the tall Valka. Though she stands resolute. In Bower's guard, we made an arrangement for you to protect this large cart until we were away from the dredge threat. They're across that damn chasm. That job is done. Agreed. But the cart you've been hauling has become too troublesome. It needs to be sunk in the deepest waters around. Huh? You grunt in disgust. Valka secrets. You will turn down the Mender Council's coin. What's in the cart? If you needed to know, I would have told you. Suffice it to say you have a Valka's oath for a great deal of coin once you have sunk that cart. The Blue River northwest of Bindal is my suggestion. And if I just leave it in the woods somewhere, I will know, as will the other Valka. Besides, the ravens always finish their jobs. That reputation means everything to you. You growl, but she's right. Fine. The raven's oath. It will be done. Juno nods and walks away. Folka watches her leave and returns to your side. Now what? Now we have a job. Yay. Bye bye. Alright. So that's a teaser for what lies ahead. 
But since you're going to be streaming Road Warden tomorrow, I believe I should call it a night for now. <laughs> Time check, it is 1 a.m. If I keep playing, I'm gonna not end up sleeping. There'll be a fight soon. I, I don't know what Juno wants buried. But I was wondering what that sealed cart was for. But we're just gonna bury it now? Is it a dredge thing? What, what is it? I don't know. But yeah, we're gonna pause there for now. Um, and I'm gonna see you all for the finale of our... I think the finale of our Road Warden stream tomorrow before we move on to other games. So Road Warden is very text heavy, but I've enjoyed the story so far. It's more of a, you know, it's not really the destination of Road Warden, it's the journey. And the journey has been quite interesting so far in Road Warden. So we'll be finishing that. We'll be attempting to finish it later today or tomorrow for some of you all. Uh, but thank you for being here for the first stream in a month, basically. It's just great to be back. It's just lovely seeing all these familiar faces. All the support means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone wishes to guide the raid, please do so. If not, we have Rafi Graffiti, who is playing Signalis. They have just resurrected their laptop. And I'm glad Rafi is finally playing Signalis. I love Signalis. I think we'll be sending you over there. It's been a while since we were able to raid. But Rafi is a great artist, a great streamer. Uh, please do check them out. Thank you for that. And I'm going to put Generate in there. But thank you, everyone. For those who may be still be lurking, if you enjoy this content, please do consider hitting that follow button and checking us out on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm just so glad to be back. I hope to do this more and do more for you and for the rest of the community and the channel. Thank you for being here and being part of Tabletop Cinema. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all tomorrow for Road Warden. For now, let us go say hello to Rafi Graffiti. Thank you so much. I'll see you all. And that's all I got for you today. And as always, welcome to the table. Have a great one. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.